Okay, good day everyone. So uh, today, uh, this morning, we are going to discuss on uh, penalties, continuation of my lecture with respect to uh, penalties. Allow me to share screen. I hope everyone can see this one. Yon. So part of my, this is part one of my second uh, lecture. So let's go to the uh, penalties. Uh, penal, um, penalties, kinds of penalties, principal penalties, as well as uh, accessory penalties. Later on, I will be discussing to you uh, the other types of penalties, which is uh, divisible and indivisible penalties. Okay. Okay, let's go to first to the principal penalties. So what are the principal penalties? CACL lang yun. Okay, uh, allow me to annotate. So we have a capital. C stands for capital. A is for afflictive. C, another C is for correctional. And the last one is light. If you're if you asked what are the principal penalties, you have the capital, afflictive, correctional, and light. Okay? When you talk about capital, it means it refers to that. Afflictive. After that, will you have reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, perpetual or temporary, absolute disqualification, perpetual or temporary, uh, perpetual or temporary special disqualification, and the last one is uh, prison mayon. Afflictive. Uh, reclusion perpetua is not a capital punishment. It is afflictive. The only, um, only, only capital is death. No? After death, afflictive, reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, perpetual or temporary, absolute disqualification, perpetual or temporary special disqualification, and prison mayor. When you talk about correctional, PASD. Uh, pagkatapos ng prison mayor, correctional, of course, you will start with prison correctional. Kaya nga, correctional. Eh. Prison correctional, arresto mayor, suspension, and destiore. Uh, PASD, correctional. Prison correctional, arresto mayor, suspension, destiore. Light would be, uh, meron na tayong arresto mayor, so arresto minor na lang to. And public censor. Pag light, ano bang penalty ng aresto menor? One day to 30 days. Diba? So light yun. And uh, public censor. Provisions common to all. Ano bang common? Facebook. FB. No? Find and bond to keep peace. Okay? Yan. Sige. So as I've said, no, we got death, reclusion perpetua, afflictive, reclusion temporal, perpetual temporary absolute disqualification, perpetual temporary special disqualification, prison mayor. Baka itanong lang. No? So pag correctional, as I've said, PASD, prison correctional, arresto mayor, suspension, gestero, light is arresto minor, public censor, and the provisions common to the three classes uh fine and bond to keep peace now if you have the principal ano bang principal penalties those which must be expressly stated in the decision of the court that which must be expressly stated accept accessory penalties it need not be stated in the uh, uh, decision or in the sentence why because it is dimly 
deemed impliedly instituted with the principal. Kaya nga, accessory follows the principal, di ba? So, pag may principal, merong ganitong accessory penalties. Notice nyo, perpetual uh, uh, perpetual or temporary absolute disqualification, perpetual or special disqualification. So, meaning to say, etong dalawang ito can be a principal as well as accessory penalties. Diba? Kanina yung uh, sinama natin to kanina sa ano eh, afflictive penalty as a principal penalty. Pero they can be an accessory penalties likewise. No? Now, next will be suspension. S yan eh. Uh, SR, suspension from public office, the right to vote or be voted for the profession or, or calling. So, suspension from public office, the right to vote or, or be voted for any profession or calling. SRP. No? Then you have the civil interdiction, you have indemnification, you have for future or confiscation of uh, the of instruments or proceeds of the offense and payment for the cost so what are the accessory penalties again the ito yon, perpetual and absolute disqualification suspension or from office the right to vote or be voted and pay for the profession or calling civil interdiction, indemnification for future confiscation of instruments and proceeds of the offense. NP stands for payment of cost. So remember those things. This may be asked in uh, uh, objective type. Fine. You have to memorize this. The reckoning is uh, period would be 1.2 to uh, 40,000 pesos. Yan ang importante dyan. So, fine. Uh, allow me. Annotate. It could be. Uh, afflictive. Correctional. And light. So, ang reckoning is 1.2 million. No, if it's above 1.2 million, if it's uh, afflicted. If it is between uh, 1.2 million and not, I'm sorry, and not lower than 40K, 40,000 pesos, it's correctional. So above 1.2 million afflictive when talking about fine ah, correctional 40,000 pesos to 1.2 million exactly. Now if it's lower than uh, 40,000 pesos then it's only light. So a correctional is uh, exactly 40,000 pesos to 1.2 above it will be deemed as afflictive below 40,000 it is deemed to be a light penalty. Okay, let me clear these things. Duration of penalties, alam nyo na yan. Reclusion perpetua, di ba? Uh, 20 years one day to 40 years. May tanong dito, reclusion perpetua. Uh, Life imprisonment is a penalty more favorable to the convict than reclusion perpetua. Okay, do you agree? Is it true or false? It's false kasi ang life imprisonment, alam natin, ini-impose yun sa special penal laws. Walang jury, ayun yan. Basta life, life talaga. Whereas ang penalty ng reclusion perpetua, which is uh, a penalty uh, imposed on crimes punished under the RPC, has a duration of 20 years one day only until 40 years. So life imprisonment is beyond 40 years at it, as it has no uh, fixed duration. Baka lang tanongin uh, uh, as 
uh, the difference between life imprisonment and uh, reclusion perpetua. Again, no life imprisonment is imposed under special penal laws, while uh, uh, reclusion perpetua is imposed in uh, uh, RPC. And the duration of reclusion perpetua is 20, 20 years, one day to 40 years. Life imprisonment can be beyond the same. Okay, let's go to the duration of penalties. Sige. Simulan natin sa... Uh, arresto menor. Arresto menor will be uh, one day to uh, 30 days. Arresto mayor would be one month, no, one day to six months. Then prison mayor would be six months. One day. Bakit may one day? Para hindi sila mag-overlap. Two, six years. Tatandaan niyo at... I'm sorry. It's not prison mayor. It's prison correctional. Ha? So after arrest of mayor is prison correctional. Six months, one day, two, six years. Tao na to. We're not talking about months. Okay? Uh, prison mayor is uh, six years. One day to 12 years. Reclusion uh, temporal is 12 years, one day to 20 years. And reclusion perpetua is what? As I mentioned, 20 years, one day to 40 years and that okay now classification death and reclusion perpetua we call this as indivisible penalties meaning to say they have no minimum medium and maximum periods all the rest are deemed to be divisible penalties Okay, so sabi ng Supreme Court, although reclusion perpetua has a duration of 20 years, one day to 40 years, it is still an indivisible penalty. It was never the intention of the legislative body to consider reclusion perpetua as a divisible penalty. Hence, wala, wala kayong maririnig na reclusion perpetua in its minimum period Reclusion perpetua in its maximum period. Walang ganon, di ba? Okay. So, pag sinabing divisible penalties, meron siyang minimum, uh, maximum, medium, and minimum. So, you just divide this into three equally. Then you will have uh, the uh, maximum uh, we have the minimum, medium, and maximum period. That, wala silang ganon because it's an indivisible penalty and reclusion perpetua. Pamiya, when we go into uh, when when we go into uh, Islaw, I'm just admitting. Uh, PBRC, can you admit ha, para hindi na ako masayang oras? When we go to indeterminate sentence law, malalaman nyo no, that it's not applicable to indivisible penalties. Wala nito sa islaw. No? Wala ito sa islaw. Uh, if the penalty is also uh, less than one year, no? wala rin sa islaw to. Mamaya, malalaman nyo, applicable lang yun sa tatlo. In so far as crimes punished under the RPC, applicable lang sa reclusion temporal, prison mayor, 
and prison correctional. Arresto mayor, arresto minor, not applicable to Islao because it's one less than one year. During a uh, death and reclusion perpetua are also not considered because uh, they are deemed as uh, indivisible penalties and uh, it's not applicable to indivisible penalties. Okay. Oh, buti, nagbigay ng basic question ng 2019. No? What are the respective duration of the penalties of reclusion perpetua or prison mayor? Kayang-kaya niya nang sagutin yan. Di ba? Mayor, 6 years, 1 day, 12 years. Perpetua, 20 years, 1 day, 2, 40 years. Okay. Uh, death. Okay. Okay. Uh, when it is not excluded by reason of commutation or pardon shall carry with that ano bang accessory penalty standard perpetual absolute disqualification and that of civil interdiction during the 30 years following the sentence unless such accessories penalties have been expressly remitted in the pardon so nakalagay dito uh, na sentensyahan bar question siya no uh, he was sentenced to death by final judgment, but subsequently he was granted pardon. So death sentence, pinardon siya, pero ang pardon niya ay silent on the perpetual disqualification. Diba? Nakala, well, ang, nakala, ang sinasabi ng batas, unless such accessory penalties have been expressly remitted in the pardon. So ibig sabihin ito, hindi expressly remitted in the pardon. So nung pinardon siya, uh, he, uh, uh, he ran for office as mayor. Yung kalaban niya, seeks to disqualify him. Okay? He contended, try, uh, contended he is not disqualified because he was already pardoned by the, by the president unconditionally. Is his contention correct or not? It has no merit. Why? Because uh, very clear ang provision ng Article 40. No? The law is clear on the matter. Pursuant to Article 40 of the RPC, the death penalty is not executed by reason of commutation or pardon the accessory penalties or perpetual absolute disqualification and civil interdiction okay, shall remain as effect for 30 years unless accessory penalties have been expressly remitted. The facts of the case do not show that uh, tries disqualification to hold office was expressly restored. So since in Neon expressly restored uh, and remitted with the pardon extended by the president, yung kanyang disqualification stands. Okay? So Article 45, ito hindi gana natin pinapansin, pero paminsan-minsan lumalabas sa bar. No? So ano nangyayari doon sa... Uh, instruments of the crime. Oh, ang sabi ng batas, every penalty imposed for the commission of a federal felony shall carry with it for feature of the proceeds of the crime. So lahat ng ginamit ng instruments sa crime, uh, proceeds of the crime, no, it will be forfeited. No? Ang nakalagay, forfeited uh, in favor of the government. What is the exception? Unless they be the property of a third person not liable for the offense. But those articles which are not subject of a lawful commerce shall be destroyed. Katulad ng mga droga, di ba? And it shall be destroyed. Pero kung sasakyan at uh, hindi naman siyang owner, it is owned by a third person, walang kinalangaman sa sacrament, then it will be uh, it the, the, it will not be confiscate, confiscated or forfeited in favor of the uh, government ibabalik yon so yun ang uh, this bar question is based on this codal provision uh, hindi na natin gana na magtatagal tayo basta ang sagot diyan is eto the basis article 45 no every uh, Unless it will be forfeited in favor of the government unless they are the property of a third person, not liable for the offense. In this case, in the hearing, he was able to prove that he had only borrowed the vehicle from his brother. 
the registered owner. So consequently, the order of the said court to release the Toyota Innova vehicle to his brother is correct. Kasi hindi naman uh, included sa, yung brother niya sa kanyang krimen. Okay? Yung pangalawang issue is the issue as to whether to cancel or forfeit an instrument can only be made once there is a judgment rendered. Kasi may isa pang uh, 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 vehicle na ginamit, sabi ng court. So hindi pa kasi nadedetermine. Uh, so uh, hindi hindi pa dapat i-forfeit. No? It can, a forfeiture can only be made once there is a judgment rendered where a penalty is meted out. So kung if it is pending, hindi pa pwede pang i-forfeit. No? Okay. Penalties to be imposed upon uh, a principal, etc., etc. Let me just illustrate this. So you have the... Uh, Consummated, frustrated, and you have the attempted. We're talking about the stages of execution. So you have the uh, principal, principals. Uh, wait. Yun, Sorry. Principles, accomplices, and accessories. Sa penalty imposed in so far as the revised penal code, no, it is deemed imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage. So lahat ng penalties provided under the revised penal code, it is deemed to be imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage. So that if, it's, uh, if the crime is limbawa, consummated murder, Kung ang, kung ang uh, findings ay he is guilty of frustrated uh, murder, it's one degree lower than that imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage of uh, murder. One degree lower than that of the consummated uh, murder. If it is attempted, it's two degrees lower than that imposed by law upon a principal on a consummated stage. If committed by an accomplice, it's one degree lower than that imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage. Pag accomplice is two degrees lower. No? And so forth and so on. If it is an accessory, it's two degrees lower than that imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage. So, good on lang yun. No? Okay, let's go to now to the effects of the attending or mitigating circumstances and of habitual delinquency. Habitual delinquency, pamiya i-discuss natin. Dito muna tayo sa Effects of the attending, mitigating, and aggravating. Okay. Anong rule? Mitigating or aggravating circumstances and habitual delinquency shall be taken into account for the purpose of, you know, pag mitigating, diminishing. Aggravating, increasing the penalty. However, in the following instances, no, uh, uh, hindi siya kasama. Aggravating circumstances Ano bang type ng aggravating? Uh, we have generic aggravating. 
allow me again to annotate. Aggravating, we have a uh, uh, generic, no? we have qualifying, we have inherent, we have specific, and we have special. Okay, ano ang, what are we going to use in order to diminish or increase the same to its uh, maximum period? or to increase it to its maximum period. It will be the generic aggravating circumstance. Ito lang ang ginagamit sa rule of offsetting. Generic aggravating as against ordinary mitigating. So, we know sa mitigating, merong privilege at merong tayong uh, uh, ordinary mitigating. So, Ang rule of offsetting is only applicable between generic and mitigating, no ordinary mitigating. Sabi sa batas, uh, aggravating circumstance which in themselves constitute a, a crime specially punished by law or which are included in law in defining uh, and prescribing penalty shall not be taken into account for purposes of increasing the penalty. Meaning to say, uh, if used as an inherent one, or is used in a specific uh, penalty or if it if it is the is they are or qualifying they should not be used for increasing the penalty to its maximum period okay uh, tatandaan lang pagka ang uh, advantage was taken by the offender of his public position uh, always impose it in its maximum, regardless of mitigating circumstances. Meaning to say, uh, that's a special aggravating. Pag special aggravating, no, katulad ng complex crime, when a single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave penalties, or when it is a necessary means to commit another anong penalty to its maximum period, regardless of the mitigating, uh, special and yon, aggravating. And you cannot use it as a generic aggravating to offset an ordinary mitigating. Okay? So, tatandaan nyo na. Uh, saan pa hindi ginagamit sa rule of offsetting? When I said that, alam bawa, uh, included in the law in defining a crime. Katulad ng uh, uh, arson, the use of fire. It's an aggravating diba, use of fire, but uh, it can be used in defining a crime itself because uh, arson is committed with the use of fire. So, hindi mo na siya i-offset. The same rule shall apply with respect to any of the aggravating circumstances inherent in the com in the crime, no? Like uh, uh, evident premeditation is inherent in the crime of robbery with force upon things. So hindi mo na siya gagamitin pa to offset an ordinary mitigating. Aggravating or mitigating circumstances which arise from the moral attributes of the offender from a private relation shall only serve to aggravate or mitigate the liability of the persons as to whom such circumstances are attendant. Yung halimbawa um, sa parasite, yung, yung, yung relationship, no? uh, applicable lang yun sa private relations of the offended party, ap applicable lang yun doon sa kung sino yung uh, related doon sa victim but not with a uh, stranger the circumstances which consist in the material execution of the act or the means of play uh, to accomplish it uh, shall serve to aggravate or mitigate the liability of those persons only had the knowledge of of that time of the execution of the act alam mo si AND this uh, conspired to kill X. Tapos si B na ang uh, pumili kung paano niya papatayin si X. Sabi niya, uh, siya lang ang pumili. Okay, gagawit akong treachery. So yung treachery na applicable lang yung KB and not to A. 
Okay. Habito, if he's a habitual delinquent, no? Habitual delinquency is not an aggravating circumstance. Pamiya, explain natin later on yun, no? But it will, ang effect ng habitual delinquency is to impose an additional penalty. But this is not to be deemed as that of an aggravating circumstance. Now, we have rules for the application of indivisible penalties. I will be discussing it uh, in, in a while. Pero gusto ko lang ipakita sa inyo yung uh, the rule. Tingnan nyo, merong single indivisible penalty, meron two indivisible penalty. According to Article 63, pag single indivisible penalty yan, it shall be applied by the courts regardless of the presence of any mitigating or aggravating circumstances. No, if uh, two indivisible penalties, uh, wala ta pag indivisible, ibig sabihin yan, reclusion, ang penalty is reclusion perpetua to death. No, If one is, at wala siyang, in, since it is, an indivisible, they are indivisible penalties. As I mentioned earlier, there is no period. There is no minimum, nor medium, nor maximum periods. So the only choices is reclusion perpetua or death. So kung one aggravating lang, the greater penalty, which is death. No? If neither aggravating nor aggravate, neither mitigating nor aggravating, the lesser penalty, which is reclusion perpetua. Dalawa lang pagpipilian, di ba? Kasi ano lang yun, reclusion perpetua or death. Okay? Pagka-attended ng uh, mitigating at no aggravating, lesser penalty, which is reclusion perpetua. Tapos pagka meron ng mix between uh, the presence of uh, uh, mitigating as well as aggravating circumstances, then it upsets one another. Notice that this rule is applicable to two indivisible penalties. Okay, Rule 64 speaks about divisible penalties. May three periods, minimum, medium, maximum periods. We're talking about divisible penalties. That will be reclusion temporal down. Hindi kasama ang reclusion perpetua dyan, nor death. No? So kung walang aggravating, walang mitigating, medium, Pag isa lang ang mitigating, pag mitigating at wal, uh, walang, uh, there is no aggravating minimum. When aggravating, when talk, pag sinabi natin, when only an aggravating circumstance, we are talking to what type of aggravating? Generic aggravating. Okay? The penalty, if generic aggravating only and no ordinary mitigating, maximum period. When two or more mitigating, no aggravating circumstances, no aggravating circumstances, and then it will be a penalty next lower. Okay. Whatever be and then uh, yung maximum p yung whatever be maybe the number and nature of the aggravating circumstances, the court shall not impose a greater penalty than that prescribed by law. In its maximum period. Hanggang maximum period lang aggravating. Hindi siya pe pwedeng the penalty next higher. Okay? So, let's illustrate this para maintindihan nyo ng gusto. Review of the different kinds of mitigating circumstances. Aggravating and mitigating. Okay. Mitigating, as I've said, you only have ordinary and privilege. What's the difference between the two? Ordinary, we use it to offset an aggravating circumstance. What else? If present, Ordinary mitigating without any aggravating circumstances, then the penalty will be reduced in its minimum period. We're only talking about period here as a general rule. Pag privilege mitigating, uh, we will lower it by one or two degrees, usually by one degree lower. 
Okay? Pag uh, aggravating, what are the types of aggravating? Aggravating, sinabi ko na kanina, uh, generic aggravating. No? We have qualifying. Pag sinabing qualifying, it changes the nature of the crime, katulad ng treachery. And treachery can be used as a qualifying aggravating circumstance in the crime of murder. No? Uh, treachery, evident premeditation will be an example of qualifying circumstances of uh, murder. Tanggalin mo yung qualifying, then the crime is what? Merely homicide. Diba? Both of them have intent to kill. Then we have uh, inherent, as I've said, in uh, evident premeditation is inherent in the crime of robbery with force upon things. At wag mo nang gamitin yan to offset an ordinary mitigating. We have special, yung mga provision na sinasabi, uh, uh, impose it in its maximum period regardless of the mitigating circumstances. Special yun. And we have specific, applicable to specific crimes. Again, let me just emphasize, no? let me just emphasize that this, the rule of offsetting is only applicable in so far as ordinary mitigating as against the generic aggravating circumstances. Silang dalawa lang yan. No, wag kang mag-offset ng privilege mitigating because if this is uh, if you see a privilege mitigating immediately you lower it, no? By a degree. Regardless of the presence of any of the aggravating circumstances. Ito lang dalawa ang pinag uh, usapan when we apply the rule of offsetting. Okay, so uh, let's go to the rules on divisible and indivisible penalty. So we have, let me annotate again. Single indivi indivisible penalty. And you have a uh, two indivisible penalties. <clears throat> uh, na lang. Okay. Pag sinabing single and divisible penalty, dapat yan. Ang penalties, either reclusion perpetua. Reclusion perpetua. O kaya, death. No? Dito lang sa dalawa. Pag sinabing two indivisible penalties, nakalagay dun sa, ano, sa imposition of penalties. The penalty is reclusion perpetua to death. Yan. Magkasama yung dalawa yan. Penalty is reclusion perpetua to death. Single and divisible penalty ang nakalagay sa, sa decision ng court is either reclusion perpetua or o kaya death. Mamimili lang sa dalawa. Anong, what's the rule in so far as uh, single and divisible penalties? No offsetting. When you talk about the offsetting, we do not consider the presence of ordinary mitigating or generic aggravating circumstances to change or to modify the decision. So if there is a voluntary surrender, if there is a plea of guilt, magkakasama yan, no? Uh, hindi, you will not apply yung, uh, the rule doon sa divisible penalties that you lower it by one degree. No. Pag sinabing ang penalty is reclusion perpetua, kahit ng sangkatutak na, na plea of guilt yan at meron ka pang uh, uh, voluntary surrender, no? 
meron ka pang passion ng confiscation magkakasama sa isang facts of the case, it will not affect the imposition of the penalty to lower it in its minimum period. Why? Because yun ang sinasabi, ang penalty kasi is single indivisible. It's reclusion perpetua. Kung reclusion temporal yan, pe, pwede mo i-consider yun. Ano? Yung rule, pamaya, pag-usapan natin, pwede mo i-consider yun to lower it by, in its, uh, by a degree. But if it's single indivisible, penalty is death. Kahit merong kang Ah, uh, sige. Plea of guilt. Plea of guilt is a mitigating circumstance. Okay, voluntary surrender is uh, a, a uh, mitigating circumstance. Number three, we have a passion in obfuscation. No, uh, immediate vindication. Well, okay. Uh, those are not considered in the imposi in the imposition of penalties. Wala kang i-offset because the penalty is uh, reclusion perpetua. And that is the rule. If it is a single indivisible penalty, no rule of offsetting. Do not consider ordinary mitigating, not even a generic aggravating, no, to affect the imposition of the penalties. Let's go to two indivisible penalties. As I've said, pag sinabing two indivisible penalties, the penalty is reclusion perpetua to death. There are indiv indivisible penalties, meaning to say they have no minimum, medium, or maximum periods. No? So, uh, ang pagpipilihan mo lang yan is the lower, lesser offense, which is reclusion uh, perpetua. Or, the greater offense yun lang which is death ah limbawa ah uh, no ordinary mitigating no generic aggravating anong i-impose mo diyan pagtabla the lesser penalty which is reclusion perpetua no next if there is only mitigating circumstance and no aggravating the lower the lesser penalty which is again reclusion perpetua e kung nakita mo no uh, there is one aggravate there is aggra an aggravating circumstance without any mitigating then the greater penalty which is death no Ngayon, parang uh, pag-mitigating at aggravating, labo-labo na sila, then you apply the rule of offsetting. Now, the choices are only the greater penalty and the lesser penalty. The greater penalty being death, the lesser penalty being reclusion perpetua. Again, this is only applicable to two indivisible penalties. Reclusion perpetua to death. Yun lang nakalagay doon. Pagka ang so ang importante titingnan niyo kung ano yung penalty. Ano mo penalty impose? Number one, single indivisible penalty ba yan? Ito apply niyo. Walang rule of offsetting. Ano mo penalty kung two indivisible penalty naman? Ano apply niyo? Ito. Pangatlo, paano kung divisible penalty? Okay? Yan ang pag-uusapan natin after this, no? Pag when you talk about divisible penalties again, no, uh, we go down to reclusion temporal down. Not reclusion perpetua because this is a indivisible penalty, not it, more so with death, no? Wala namang death in its minimum period. Wala namang death in its maximum period. I hope everybody understands this one. Mm. Uh, let's go to divisible. So we have discussed single indivisible, second, two indivisible penalties. Now we will go to third, which is a divisible penalty. So what are the divisible penalties? No? Reclusion 
as I've said, recursion temporal down. Okay. Mitigating. When I talk about mitigating, I am referring to an ordinary mitigating. Pag sinabi kong aggravating, I am referring to uh, a generic aggravating. Okay. So, uh, if there is uh, zero mitigating as zero aggravating, tabla sila, no mitigating, no aggravating. So, we will impose it sa gitna, medium period. No? Okay, pag 1 aggravating, 0 aggravating, then minimum period. Pag 0 mitigating, 1 aggravating, maximum period. Okay? Ngayon, if there are, uh, okay tayo to, so meron kang uh, video minimum max. Kung merong 2, dalawa, Two or more mitigating circumstances as against zero mitigating, then you reduce it by one degree. Remember this one. This is only applicable if there is no meeting aggravating circumstances. Tapat sirian. Na wala kang iyo offset. No? When there are two or more mitigating circumstances and zero aggravating, you reduce it by one degree. Now, is it a privilege mitigating? No. It only is akin to a privilege mitigating in the sense that it can be lowered by one degree. No, lower by one degree. No. The difference is that in privilege mitigating, kahit meron siyang isang aggravating circumstance, it will not affect the lowering of the penalty since it's a privilege mitigating. In this rule, if there is one aggravating, you do not lower it by one degree. Kung halimbawa, sampo ang mitigating, isang aggravating. Okay? Since may isang aggravating, no, you do not lower it by one degree. Now, uh, pagka maraming, pag zero Mitigating at least one, uh, two or more aggravating. No, we do not increase it by maximum period, uh, by one degree. Because that is no longer favorable to the accused. So again, you, re you impose it to its maximum period. Okay. Number six. Ah, uh, 'yun, pagka meron na silang labo-labo na sila, ah, uh, uh, pagka meron na silang ah uh, uh, may isang mitigating, may dalawang aggravating, you offset these two, you will arrive at the uh, maximum period. No, number bawa 7. If for example, you have uh, three mitigating as against one, then you will impose it to its minimum period. Okay? What else? Uh -huh. Let's erase this na lang. Kung halimbawa ay merong uh, mitigating and aggravating. So kung merong number 8 na tayo, dalawang mitigating, dalawang aggravating, then i-offset mo yan, 0, 0, then it will become minimum period. Pero again, pag sinabi kong there are 5 mitigating as against 1, no, you do not decrease it by 1 degree. Because there's one aggravating. 
Ay, sorry. Pagtabla, mid, uh, medium. Too aggravating, too, aggrav too aggravating, too mitigating, medium period. Five mitigating as against one aggravating. Majority ang mitigating. So it will be in its minimum period. Now, uh, what is the significance? Pamia is, you remember this rule because this is how to, we get the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Uh, atandaan yun. So, ito, labo-labo sila. Uh, Mr. X and Y engage in a violent fist fight which Mr. X instigated. This culminated in Mr. X repeatedly smashing Mr. Y's head on the concrete pavement. Thereafter, Mr. X left Mr. Y barely breathing and almost dead. A few minutes after the incident, Ito na yung mga circumstances. No? Mr. X immediately went to the police station to confess. That's a mitigating circumstance. No? Uh, fortunately, fortunately, the police rescued Mr. Y and he survived with the help of timely medical uh, intervention. So he could have died. No? Uh, barely breathing, pero nabuhay siya. The wound is a mortal wound. Alam naman natin yun, pag mortal wound, pero the person survived uh, independent of the will of the uh, offender or the perpetrator, then the crime will be frustrated. Diba? So tama, frustrated homicide. And then to which he openly confesses guilt, another mitigating. So ano-ano mga mitigating? Went to the police station to confess. Okay? That's mitigating. Opes, uh, a plea of guilt is also mitigating. Okay? Now, under the RPC daw, the penalty of homicide is reclusion temporal. Wag muna tayong mag-apply ng islaw. No? Uh, since there are two, the presence of, buti dito, they in-indicate na to mitigate, ordinary mitigating. No? Kung na kung na prove daw ang two ordinary mitigating ano yon a confession of guilt voluntary surrender what will be the penalty the penalty for homicide is reclusion temporal di ba eh nabuhay naman siya so naging frustrated homicide so since the uh, penalty for homicide is uh, reclusion temporal Based dun sa lecture ko kanina, since it's frustrated homicide, the penalty to be imposed should be one degree lower than the imposed upon a person, a principal on a consummated stage. So, ergo, what's one degree lower than reclusion temporal? No? Uh, prison uh, mayor, right? Now, since there are two Ordinary mitigating as against zero aggravating, you lower it again by one degree. So one degree lower than uh, prison mayor is prison correctional. Since zero zero na, impose mo yan sa medium period. Hence, no? Nagsimula muna tayo. Ito yun. Penalty is pression correctional in its medium period. How did it derive? As I mentioned, uh, the, since the penalty for homicide is reclusion temporal, a divisible penalty, so Mr. X is found guilty of frustrated homicide. homicide. So what's one degree lower than uh, uh, reclusion temporal? The, we will arrive at prison mayor, right? At since uh, dalawang ordinary mitigating without any aggravating circumstance, you lower it again by one degree. Huh? Para malinaw sa atin. Uh, penalty is... Uh, 
reclusion temporal for homicide. A frustrated homicide lang ang conviction niya. The one degree lower, prison mayor. Baba ka ng prison mayor. E merong two ordinary mitigating. Zero aggravating. Yung kanina sinabi ko, pag walang zero aggravating to mitigating, baba ka ng prison correctional. Kung zero-zero siya, the prison correctional in its medium period. That will be the penalty. Okay? Tatandaan nyo yun, ha? Okay, penalty to be imposed when the crime is solely not excusable. Uh, well, itong Article 69 speaks only about uh, incomplete, no? uh, incomplete uh, uh, justifying or mitigating. Basta ang majority is present no? para siya ay maging uh, privilege. In so far as self-defense is concerned, Uh, alam bawa self defense alam naman natin there are three requisites unlawful aggression reasonable necessity lack of sufficient provocation if there is only unlawful aggression then that will be only uh, an ordinary mitigating no pag one and two, you have the privilege mitigating. O kaya one and three, you have another privilege mitigating. Pag unlawful aggression only, ordinary mitigating. So only one is present, ordinary mitigating. One and two, privilege. One and three, uh, uh, privilege. Pag two and three are present, no, it's not a mitigating because unlawful aggression is an indispensable requisite. Okay, so we will go down to the indeterminate sentence law. Okay, uh, indeterminate sentence law. So why do we need... Uh, uh, to study indeterminate sentence law, um, you need to get the minimum term and the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Minimum term, why do you need to get the minimum term of the indeterminate? Because he can be eligible for to be released on parole. No? Parolado. So, pag na meet pag uh, na-serve niya na ang minimum term ng indeterminate sentence, pwede na siyang lumaya by reason of parole. And why do we have to get the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence? So that may mga, ang parole, may mga conditions. No? Kailangan mag- uh, Well, one of which is kailangan mag-report ka sa parole officer, community service, if you do not meet the conditions of parole, then you will have to serve the original sentence. Uh, you have to serve the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. That's the reason why do we have to get the minimum term and the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Iba to, this is purely different from that of the probation law. You memorize the disqualifications under ISLAW and the disqualifications under probation. ISLAW nagsisimula yung penalty is reclusion perpetua uh, or death, life imprisonment or reclusion perpetua. Ang probation is, uh, ang disqualification yan is if the penalty is more than six years. Meaning to say, ang probation, six years below pepede probation ka, di ba? Or prison correctional down. Okay, so tingnan muna natin ang ang islaw, no?
Now, this is both applicable to crimes punished under the revised penal code and as well as that of the special penal laws. Okay, let's discuss on the rules with respect to SPL. How do you get the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence? Madali lang yan. So, SPL muna tayo, no? It should not exceed the maximum fixed by the special penal law. No, not exceed. And it should not be not lower than the penalty uh, fixed by the SPL. Hindi higit not exceeding to the penalty fixed by the SPL and it should not be lower than the penalty fixed by the SPL. Anywhere in between uh, is allowed, is proper. Basta wag lang lalagpas at walang lang, wag lang bababa. Okay. So if this is us in the bar exam, first of all, uh, ilalagay nila the penalty imposed by the court and the penalty imposed by the special law. Ang tanong niyan, is the penalty imposed by the court proper? Bawa. Sample lang, no? Uh, illegal possession of firearms. Under the special penal law, illegal possession of firearms is under the SPL. Sabi ko, ibibigay yung penalty ng SPL is 5 years to 10 years. The court imposed a penalty of, uh, under the law, no? 5 years to 10 years. The court imposed, say for example, 6 years to 10 years. So ang tanong, is the penalty thus imposed by the court proper or not? Uh, mas maganda, illustrate natin ng ganito. Okay. Ah, uh, itong SPL. A special law, sabi ng batas, dapat 5 years to 10 years. Ganyan. Ang penalty ng inimpose ng ni, ni judge ay uh, 6 years to 10 years. Proper or not? So, tingnan natin ng rule. Is it, does it exceed the, the maximum fixed by law? 10 years? No, the same lang. So, check. Question. Is it lower than the minimum uh, fixed by law? No, it's 6 years. 5 years ang ano ng law. Eh, right? So, anywhere in between 6 to 10 years, it's proper. The penalty thus imposed by the court is uh, proper. What if, say, ang penalty imposed ay ng court is uh, uh, five years to nine years. Okay. Five years to nine years. It's, is it lower than the fibers imposed by the by the SPL? No. Does it exceed the maximum fixed by uh, law, which is 10 years? No, it's only 9 years. So it's still proper. Okay? So ang um, in-imposed ng court is 7 years to 12. 7 to 12 years. Yeah. Question. Is it lower than the fibers imposed by the court, by the SPL? No, it's seven years. Eh. Question, does it exceed the maximum fixed by law, which is 10 years? Yes, because 12 years now in impose. So in this case, uh, the, the, uh, the penalty imposed, thus imposed by the court is not proper. So gunun lang, uh, let me just... Uh, uh, emphasize that this is an SPL. 
So, hindi dapat siya penalty imposed by the court. If it's an SPL, no rule of offsetting. So, ano, we do not regard the presence of mitigating and aggravating circumstances. Tingnan nyo dito, walang rule of offsetting. SPL kasi yan. Wow, sa BP22, di ba? Wala nang rule of offsetting yan. Walang mitigating, walang aggravating yan. Basta hindi higit at hindi bababa sa penalty fixed by law. Do not that... Pwede kang lituhin eh. SPL pero merong mitigating, merong aggravating. Do not accept it. Do not consider that. The, is there an exception? The, is that an absolute rule? No, there's also only an ex exception. If the SPL uses the nomenclature of the RPC. Halimbawa, kung ang SPL gumagamit ng reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, then that's the time that we are going to apply the rule of offsetting. Okay? Uh, example, sir, ng uh, SPL na gumagamit ng uh, nomenclature of penalties under the Vice Penal Code. The Child Abuse Law. Child Abuse Law uses the nomenclature of penalties under the RPC. Therefore, no, the penalty, the rule that you are going to use no, in so far as the indeterminate sentence law is concerned is not that of the SPL, but that of the Revised Penal Code. So we will go into the rule of the revi uh, Islaw insofar as the revised penal code is concerned. Okay, uh, let's have a 10-minute break. No? 10-minute break before we go into the rule of Islaw insofar as SPL is con concerned. No? Wag na kayong aalis. Wag na kayong... Uh, ano dyan, mag, uh, ano lang kayo, mag, uh, sarado lang kayo ng inyong video. Uh, make sure. Okay, let's go back, everyone. Sa ating mga refresher, dapat present kayo, ha? So, the PBRC is monitoring your attendance. Okay, let's go to Islaw. So, um, cite the purposes of the indeterminate sentence, no? Uh, bihira naman tanongin, pero at least you know this, uh, you can put it into your own words if this is asked. Number one is to uplift and redeem valuable human uh, and uh, material and prevent unnecessary and excessive jurisdiction of personal liberty and economic usefulness. Secondly, it is intended to favor the accused, particularly to shorten his term of imprisonment, depending upon, upon his behavior and his physical, mental, and moral record as a prisoner to be determined by the board of uh, sentence. Uh, Ashley, pwede na tayo mag-record ulit? PBRC? Yes, ko din na-record na po. Okay. If a special law adopts the penalties under the RPC, would the indeterminate sentence law apply? Just as it will be in felonies, as I mentioned earlier, uh, RA 7610 is a special law, but it uses the nomenclature of the RPC and so therefore in obtaining the maximum and the minimum term of the indeterminate sentence, then we would apply that of the RPC and not of the SPL. So you memorize all these things. Uh, okay. Uh, disqualifications mm -hmm. under this law. Offenses punishable by death life imprisonment or 
reclusion perpetua sa isang decision ng Supreme Court sabi ng Supreme Court kasama reclusion perpetua diyan. So notice na ito ay yung pinakamatataas na ng mga penalties. And those convicted of treason, conspiracy to con or proposal to commit treason. Lahat ng mga types ng treason, ng treason, misprision of treason, rebellion, hindi ka makapag uh, Islaw, sedition, espionage, those convicted of piracy, those con uh, who are deemed as habitual delinquents, those who escape from confinement or evaded the service of sentence, those granted with conditional pardon and violated the same, those whose maximum period of imprisonment does not uh, exceed one year. Okay. Before ka mag-compute, Tingnan mo muna kung magpo-fall. Ano ba yung crime na kinumit niya? No, baka kasi kasama siya doon sa disqualifications. You check first on the disqualifications. Is he disqualified? If he's convicted of piracy, then uh, you don't have to compute. Now, uh, if it calls for whether you determine whether a person is a habitual delinquent or not, kasi ang habitual delinquent, di ba, if a period of 10 years from his last release or conviction, he committed the following crimes. Serious, less serious, physical injuries, uh, robbery, theft, estafa, falsification, a third time or offender. Di determine mo muna. No? Kung habitual delinquent siya, then... Uh, do not apply Islaw. If you conclude that he is not habitual delinquent, then uh, by all means, you compute. Of, or if he evaded the service of his sentence or escaped from confinement, o kaya binigyan siya ng conditional pardon and violated the same. Or ang penalty niya is only six months. By all means, wala, wala, you don't have to determine the maximum and the minimum term because it's not applicable. So may a person punished with reclusion perpetua be entitled to the benefit of his laws? As I've said, no, it is not no, because it's a disqualification. So there are a lot of questions there. Uh, uh, Sa bar Q, no? Tama, tingnan nyo, ah. uh, he was sentenced to life imprisonment and to indemnify, blah, blah, blah. No? She should be entitled to the benefit of his law. Well, just uh, <coughs> as I mentioned to you, life imprisonment, death, reclusion perpetua, there are disqualifications. May uh, the privilege mitigating circumstance of minority be appreciated in fixing the penalty uh, even if the penalty imposed is originally an indivisible, if it's single and indivisible penalty. At ang nakita nyo ay privilege mitigating at hindi ordinary mitigating. By all means, babaan, ibaba mo siya. Nang bawa, reclusion perpetua yan. No? Uh, let me check. Let me just. We mentioned a while ago, if it's single, indivisible penalty, no offsetting. And when we say no offsetting, we're referring to ordinary mitigating as generic aggravating. We do not consider that. But what if it's a privilege mitigating? If it is a privilege, we appreciate. Alam naman natin, we lower it by one degree. If, for example, uh, the person is 17 years of age acting with discernment, so this is a privilege mitigating. So from assuming that the penalty is reclusion perpetua, reclusion perpetua siya, uh, reclusion perpetua at meron siyang 17 years of age acting with discernment, this is a privilege uh, mitigating. You lower it by one degree. 
which is uh, uh, reclusion temporal. And since reclusion temporal is a divisible penalty, now uh, if there are uh, ordinary mitigating, you can appreciate. About 17 years of age with discernment and with, there is a plea of guilt. Plea of guilt is an ordinary mitigating. So, baba ka muna ng uh, privilege mitigating. Reclusion perpetua, down to reclusion temporal. Then you can already appreciate plea of guilt. Uh, plea of guilt without any generic aggravating, then it should be reclusion temporal in its minimum period. Okay. I hope that is clear to everyone. Uh, ang wala lang rule of upsetting is ordinary mitigating at generic aggravating sa single indivisible penalty. Pero kung may privilege mitigating, you lower it down. Ano-ano ba mga privilege mitigating? Uh, gaya yung sinabi ko, no? above 15, below 18, at acting with discernment. That's a privilege mitigating. Or self or uh, self uh, incomplete self defense, no above fifteen. I'm sorry, uh, uh, unlawful aggression, plus reasonable necessity, or unlawful aggression or lack of sufficient provocation. They are deemed as uh, privilege mitigating. You lower it not uh, by a period but by a degree. Okay, let's continue. Those convicted of treason. Anam nyo ba treason? It's a breach of allegiance, di ba? Committed by a person who owes allegiance to the Republic. That's the essence of treason. Just a conspiracy, just a, uh, a person conspired to commit treason, disqualified already. When two or more persons come to an agreement concerning the commission of treason and they decided to commit the same. Also, disqualification based on proposal to commit treason. Tignan nyo sa bar. AA was convicted of proposal to commit treason. No? Is the... Is the uh, Is uh, the indeterminate sense law applicable to AA? The answer is no, because uh, the crime for which AA was convicted is proposal to commit treason. And proposal to commit treason is a disqu express disqualification. Ano pa? Convicted of misprision of treason. Alala niyo ang misprision of treason? A person has knowledge of the crime of uh, conspiracy to commit treason and he the offender failed to disclose it to the proper authority. That's misprision of treason. And the one who commits misprision of treason is a Filipino citizen. Forced rebellion. Uh, walang problema sa rebellion. It means public uprising and taking arms against the government. No? Sedition. Uh, you know that sedition is the Raising of commotions or disturbances in the state. So that's also a disqualification. Espionage. Uh, alala nyo to, parang si James Bond. Gathering, transmitting, or losing information. Uh, respecting the national defense. Ano, to believe, with intent or reason to believe that the information is to be used to the injury of the republic or kaya to the advantage of the foreign nation. Not enemy, but foreign nation. That already constitutes as espionage. Those convicted of piracy, no ba yung ano, piracy na alala yun? No, there is intent to gain. Uh, it's like uh, robbery in the high seas, no? Uh, with with animal uh, friendly and spirit and intention of universal hostility. Oh, tignan nyo, uh, habitual delinquent. So there is a necessity to determine whether you know who is the habitual delinquent or not. So the conclusion dito, he's not habitual delinquent. No? So kung if he's a not habitual delinquent, pwede siya mag-avail ng islaw benefits. 
those who escape from confinement. Halos lahat no, ng, ng disqualifications na tanong na sa bar. Kaya memorize niyo yan. No? So he was also confined at the National Mental Hospital for mental ailments diagnosed as homicidal and suicidal instincts. During his second confinement there at he escaped. Okay. So uh, if you are the judge, uh, objection overruled, the disqualification under Islam refers to those escaped from confided or evaded sentence by virtue of a final judgment. Okay. So dito, pinagsama, titignan mo kung habitual delinquent siya, minislid siya, oh, habitual delinquent, Eh, hindi naman habitual delinquent. So, ang usipin mo, ah, pwede na siya mag-islaw. Pero hindi. Ah, Nag-escape siya sa ano eh, penitentiary. So, the, he may not be disqualified because of habitual delinquent, but he is disqualified because he escaped from confinement or evaded his sentence. So, yun. This is how uh, the disqualifications were asked in the previous bar questions. Those granted with conditional pardon and violated uh, the terms they're at. Those whose maximum period of imprisonment does not exceed one year. Marami nang tinanong sa bar insofar as this is concerned. Can an indeterminate sentence be imposed if the maximum term of imprisonment is less than one year? No, it does not apply. So, mag uh, impose ka ng straight penalty. Huwag ka na maglagay ng maximum term at minimum term. Okay. Those already serving final judgment upon approval of the said law. Is the imposition of indeterminate sentence mandatory in criminal cases? Yes. So, ang, di ba, pag serve niya ang minimum term, pwede na siyang eligible for parole. So, pag parolado na siya, he will, uh, the convict re should report personally to a government official or so other parole officers no? uh, for a period of surveillance equivalent to the remaining portion of the maximum sentence imposed upon him or until final release. Uh, okay, how is the indeterminate sentence law uh, applied in imposing a sentence? Okay, we have discussed uh, offenses in violation of special penal law. As I've said, the maximum term shall not exceed the maximum fixed by the special penal laws. To get the minimum, it should not be less than the minimum term fixed by the special law. Oh. So we have just discussed that lengthily. As I've said, pag SPL, the presence of a mitigating circumstance is immaterial in the imposition of the penalty. Nakalagay dito, ano, uh, Andres is charged with an offense defined by special penal law. Upon arraignment, he entered the plea of guilt. So, ibig sabihin, this is misleading. I mean, uh, you don't consider the uh, the plea of guilt where the penalty where uh, the crime involved is a special penal law. No? So, dapat very careful kayo in analyzing the part problem and you have to spot the issue. The plea of guilt as a mitigating circumstance cannot be appreciated because the law violated is a special law. Rules involving uh, Crimes punished under the RPC. So, cite the rule in arriving at a maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Nakalagay dyan, how do you get the maximum? Is that in view of the attending circumstances? Could be properly be imposed. No? Are the rules of upsetting the, the modifying circumstances applicable in determining the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence? Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, how do you get the minimum term? Uh, it's one degree lower or the penalty index lower to that prescribed by the code. And the period of which is upon the discretion of the court. Okay. Sige. Um, I, I will lecture the same to you. Let me use the whiteboard. Yeah. So we are now with the revised penal code. Kanina, our uh, special penal laws. Now we will go into the revised penal code. How do you get the maximum term? And how do you get the minimum? Not, not not maximum sentence, but maximum term. Ha? Dapat tama ang sinabi nyo. Maximum term at minimum term. Okay. Uh, in view, nakalagay sa batas, in view of the attending circumstances. In view of the attending circumstances. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Pag to get the maximum term, uh, you apply the rule of offsetting. You apply also, uh, or in other words, you apply, you appreciate the presence of the ordinary mitigating and generic aggravating in order to arrive at the proper uh, maximum penalty for the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Meaning to say, yung kaninang binigay ko sa inyo na rule is applicable. Doon sa divisible. Sir, bakit hindi indivisible? Kasi pag indivisible penalties, sinabi natin kanina, it's not applicable to indivisible penalties. No? So, yun. Simbawa, mitigating, aggravating, ito yun. Yung 0-0, uh, medium, 1 uh, and 0, minimum I'm sure ano naalala niyo to zero mitigating one aggravating max two or more zero one degree lower okay and a cheta cheta yun yun how do you get the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence you apply the rule of setting you appreciate the presence of ordinary mitigating and generic aggravating. Ito yun. Of course, when there's a privilege mitigating, baba ka alat. No? Automatically, you lower it by, by a degree. Then, up, do not up, regardless of the presence of, uh, of any aggravating circumstances. Okay. How do you get the minimum term of the indeterminate sentence? It's one uh, degree lower than that imposed by the code. No, and what is the period? Sabi ko memorization nito. The period of which a period of which is upon the discretion of the court. Always that, no? If you get into the minimum term of the term indeterminate sentence is one degree lower than that imposed by the RPC and the period of which is upon the discretion of the court. So this is just cut and paste. The, per the period of which is upon the discretion of the court. So, is there a rule of setting in obtaining the minimum term? Wala. Ito lang sa maximum. 
Okay, so let's illustrate this. No? The penalty, for, say, for example, is reclusion temporal. There is a plea of guilt. So, determine the, the uh, maximum term and the minimum term of the indeterminate sentence. Reclusion temporal, plea of guilt. What is plea of guilt? A mitigating circumstance, right? Is there any aggravating circumstance present? None. So we will apply this one. You have one uh, mitigating circumstance, zero aggravating, you will arrive at the minimum term. So the penalty is reclusion temporal. The maximum term is reclusion temporal in its minimum period. Huwag niyong kalilimutan na ang tamang salita. Reclusion temporal in its minimum period as what? The maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Okay, minimum term, sabi natin, it's one degree lower than that imposed by the code. Since it's uh, RT, reclusion temporal, what's one degree lower than reclusion temporal? One degree lower is prison mayor. Then sabi ko, cut and paste na lang to. Prison mayor, the period of which is upon the discretion of the court. That's it. Dali lang, di ba? So, again, how do you answer this one? Reclusion temporal and you have plea of guilt. Determine the maximum term and the minimum term. The maximum term, this is how you say it. The maximum term of the indeterminate sentence is reclusion temporal in its minimum period. While the minimum term is prison mayor, the period of which is upon the discretion of the court. Yun lang yun. Or pwede mo, you can say the other way around. Huli mo na yung, ano, yung maximum term. You can say reclusion temporal in its minimum period as the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Prison mayor the period of which is upon the discretion of the court as the minimum, minimum term of the indeterminate sentence. That, that's how you, you say that. Okay. Let's erase this and give another uh, example. Halimbawa is... Uh, prison mayor uh, there is a uh, use of armed men and there is a uh, voluntary surrender Determine the maximum term and in, uh, minimum term of the indeterminate sentence. So, prison mayor. Use of uh, armed men is what? It's a generic aggravating. Voluntary surrender is what? They determine yung muna kung anong circumstances. It's an ordinary mitigating. So, you have uh, uh, one aggravating and one mitigating. You offset that. So, zero, zero, magiging, zero, magiging medium siya. Right? So, in offset mo, one aggravating as against one mitigating. So, what is the maximum term of the internet indeterminate sentence? Okay, you apply the rule of offsetting. You appreciate the presence of the mitigating and aggravating. You will arrive at prison mayor in its medium period. Bakit medium period? Sabi natin, one aggravating, one mitigating. Prison mayor in its medium period as the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. While the minimum term is prison correctional 
and cut and paste the period of which is upon the discretion of the court. So, ganun lang actually kandali yun. Okay. Next. Ala, tambura lahat. Uh, reclusion, alam bawa, uh, reclusion perpetua with plea of guilt and voluntary surrender. Okay, determine the maximum daw term and the minimum term of the indeterminate sentence. Mm -hmm. What is a plea of guilt? It is an ordinary mitigating uh, voluntary surrender. Okay, ordinary mitigating sila pareho. Do you lower it by one degree? No, because yung sabi nating rule na two or more with zero uh, aggravating up only applies when the penalty is a divisible penalty. Is reclusion perpetua a divisible penalty? What is the nature of this? Single and indivisible. Balik tayo sa rule kanina, di ba? Sinabi natin, tat tatlong rule yun. Single, indivisible, two indivisible penalties, and divisible penalties. Yung two mitigating, two ordinary mitigating circumstances, as zero, as against zero aggravating, you will lower it by one degree. Only applies, no, it only applies to a situation where the penalty is a divisible. Eh, ito ay single and indivisible penalty. Anong rule natin kanina sa single and divisible penalty? We do not appreciate the presence of any of this. It's still reclusion perpetua. No? So let's change the facts. We have plea of guilt. You have voluntary surrender. But this time, you have unlawful aggression. And you have reasonable necessity of the means employed to prevent or repel the same. Okay. I repeat, no? You have plea of guilt, voluntary surrender. Pagkayan lang yan. At ang penalty is a single indivisible penalty like reclusion perpetua. Uh, no appreciation of ordinary mitigating. But this time around, if you have another circumstance, a low fall aggression, reasonable necessity of the means employed. I don't, what does it mean? Taken these two, if you'll take these two, then this will constitute as a privilege mitigating. Why? This constitutes as a incomplete self-defense, right? So if it is a privilege mitigating, you consider this as one privilege. Sa anong rule natin? Pag merong privilege mitigating, baba ka, ala, baba ka agad ng isa. So one degree lower, just to appreciate this. Appreciate muna siya. Okay? Reclusion perpetua. Baba ka ng reclusion temporal. Because of this. Because this is a privilege mitigating. Now, ang tanong ang RT, divisible or indivisible penalty? It is a divisible penalty already. So you apply the rule on divisible penalties. Right? Since you have two, uh, two ordinary mitigating circumstances as against zero aggravating, According to doon sa kanina, sa rule natin, you will lower it by one degree. What's one degree lower than reclusion temporal is prison mayor. So, uh, the, the maximum term is prison mayor. And since wala nang ina-offset, then it will be prison mayor in its medium period. Di ba? Pag zero, zero, medium so, prison mayor in its medium period as the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Since uh, bumaba siya by a period, ang minimum term, ito nang, this is now the reckoning, prison correctional. The period of which is upon the discretion of the court. Yun, yun lang yun. Okay? So, yun ang mahirap dyan.
Okay, uh, let's go back to yung kaninang... Uh, let's, see, let's see some of the bar questions. Okay, in a convicted for homicide, two mitigating as against one aggravating. No. In offset main two mitigating as against one, anong dapat? Ang rule is what? Uh, uh, minimum period. No? Uh, in offset mo ang dalawang mitigating as against one. It should be in minimum period. Now, the homicide daw is reclusion temporal. No? Uh, yun ang penalty. So, what is the uh, answer? So, since there are two mitigating as against one, as I've said kanina, pag in mo siya, minimum uh, term. I'm sorry, minimum period. So, the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence is reclusion temporal. No? Uh, in its minimum period, kasi in offset mean two as against one. Okay? Okay. What about the minimum term? Uh, uh, shall be within the range of the penalty next lower to that prescribed by law. Ano yung next penalty lower? Uh, uh, reclusion temporal. So, one low, one degree lower is prison mayor. So, ang minimum term is prison mayor. That's one degree lower than uh, yung kaninang reclusion temporal. No? It's prison mayor. As, as I've said, the period of which is upon discretion. That's the minimum term. Okay. Dangerous drugs. Will your answer be the same if it is conviction for illegal possession of drugs? No, because this is an SPL. As I've said, pag SPL, wala nang appreciation of uh, the presence of ordinary mitigating and generic aggravating. Uh, the presence of any generic, aggravating, or dynamic mitigating will not affect the proper uh, penalty to be imposed. Presence of one aggravating and four mitigating. Yun lang makikita mo na eh. Apat na mitigating as against one aggravating. Okay. Minimum, ano lang, minimum period lang. Kasi may one aggravating, di ba? Uh, so, Reduction of the penalty in its minimum period. The maximum term will be reclusion temporal. Reclusion temporal is the visible penalty. Minimum period for mitigating as against one uh, aggravating. So since it's reclusion temporal, to get the minimum term is one degree lower. What's one degree lower than reclusion temporal? Uh, so is prison mayor? The period of which, ah, uh, yeah, the prison mayor. The period of which is uh, upon the discretion of the court is to be fixed by the court in its discretion. Ganon din. Presence of one aggravating and two mitigating, di ba? Halos madali na lang yan. Eto na lang. Ganon din ang principle. Two mitigating as against one prison mayor. Then, uh, in its minimum uh, period. One degree lower is uh, prison correctional. Okay. Presence of privilege uh, mitigating and ordinary mitigating but without aggravating. Yung kaninang illustration na binigay ko sa'yo. Yun na yun. Ngayon, pagka bumaba siya ng bumaba, no? Katulad uh, nito, uh, bumaba siya uh, reclusion temporal. Okay, bumaba siya uh, 17 years of age with the servant. That's a privilege mitigating. So, bagsak siya ng reclusion temporal to uh, prison mayor. Tapos meron dalawang uh, uh, mitigating circumstances. No? So baba ulit siya. No?
ng proper panel uh, sa pagbaba niya. Passion and obfuscation and acting immediately with this, uh, uh, vindication of a grave offense. Bumaba ulit siya. Tapos nag-voluntary surrender pa siya and pleaded guilty at the trial. Ngayon, uh, since the accused is only convicted of frustrated homicide, no? ano yung pala yun? Meron pa, uh, ano pala yun? Convicted pala siya ng frustrated homicide from reclusion temporal. So it's one degree lower. So, uh, the penalty will be reduced by one degree, which is prison mayor. So, minority, no, naging prison correctional. And then, dalawang mitigating circumstances pa na present at walang aggravating. So, uh, i-lower mo pa ang prison correctional, magiging arresto mayor. And what is the duration of arresto mayor? One month, one day to six months. Is it uh, greater than one year? No. Meron tayong ano, uh, disqualification that if the penalty is less than one year, pre, uh, the indeterminate sentence law will not apply. So sasabihin mo lang, arresto mayor lang penalty mo. You don't have to state the minimum and maximum term of arresto mayor. So, summary of important points. Medyo nagtagal tayo sa islaw. Pero siguro may tatanong siguro sa islaw. That is why uh, uh, we make pay, uh, uh, give time to discuss this one. Death, life imprisonment, reclusion perpetua. Uh, treason, conspiracy or proposal to commit treason. M, misprision of treason, rebellion, sedition, P, piracy. H, habitual of delinquent. E, escape from confinement. G, granted pardon. M, is maximum term of imprisonment that does not exceed one year. And A, is already sentenced by final judgment. Do not forget this. D, T, M, P, PEG, and G, M, A. Okay? And do not forget also the rules. As I said, titignan muna kung esperian, wag pag esperian, wag mo nang walang rule of upsetting. Maximum term shall not exceed the maximum fixed by law. Minimum term shall not be less than the minimum prescribed by law. RPC, in view of how they get the maximum term, in view of the attending circumstances which could be properly imposed upon the rules of the said court, meaning to say you apply the rule of upsetting, Meaning to say, appreciate the presence of mitigating and aggravating circumstances. Minimum term is the, uh, the penalty next lower to that prescribed by the code. It's one degree lower. And again, as I've said, the period of which is upon the discretion of the court. Now, do not interchange this with probation. I will discuss lengthy the probation later on. Tandaan yung probation, ano lang yan ah. Sentence to serve a maximum term of imprisonment of more than six years. Uh, I will discuss that mentally. Okay, so let's go to part two of my lecture, of the second lecture in RPC Book 1. So you, the ones that we discussed kanina refers to uh, penalties. So para hindi kayong malito, Kasi in between may mga concepts na, na uh, we should uh, 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 discuss separately. So merong civil interdiction, merong complex crime, threefold rule, no, na wag muna natin discuss. So kanina, I've just discussed uh, the nature of the penalties. Now we will go into the other concepts, no, which are also asked in the bar questions. Ah, codal lang ito. Civil interdiction. Memorize nyo lang ito. Ah, this is under Article 36. What is the consequence if one is uh, declared civilly interdicted? Okay? Shall deprive the offender of uh, what? Parental authority, guardianship, no? M, marital authority, 
or the right to manage his property and the right to dispose of such property. Titingnan yun. Pag if a person is civilly interdicted, he cannot, he or she cannot manage the property, and he cannot sell the property, or he or he has, he or she has no right to dispose the same. Pardon, its effects. Memorize at Article Twenty Six. A pardon shall not work the restoration of the right to hold public office or the right of suffrage. So if if a person, if the president extends pardon, no, uh, if the president uh, extends uh, pardon and silent no as to whether uh, yes the, the there is a restoration of the right to hold public office, then. Uh, the prohibition still stands. Kasi ang sabi dito, unless such rights be expressly restored by the terms of the pardon. Dapat nakalagay doon expressly na restore na ang right to hold public office or the right to vote. Okay? A pardon shall in no case exempt the culprit from the payment of the civil indemnity imposed upon him by the sentence. Pecuniary liabilities under Article 38. Memorization na yan. In case the property of the offender should not be sufficient for the payment of all his pecuniary liabilities, what will be the order no? uh, or the sequence? RIFC, reparation of the damage. I is indemnification of the consequential damage. F is for a fine. The and C is for the cost of the proceedings. So R I F C. Complex crime and di nyo alam basis tena ng mga bar examinations. When a single act, ang tanong, sir, pagka ang single act, ah, tena ng mga sir, ah, ano ba ang complex crime? You say that you answer that if a single act ah produces ah two crimes. No, hindi. No, when a I mean a single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave felonies, no, uh, or when it is a necessary means to commit another, no. Kina nong yon sa 2019 bar examination. When a single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave felonies. So if uh. Uh, the felony produced is merely a light felony, then it is not a complex crime. The first part is what we call as a compound complex crime. This is a compound complex crime and this is complex crime proper when it is a necessary means to commit another compound is a single act which constitutes two or more grave or less grave felonies no pag sinabing grave capital or afflictive so from that Nung kanina natin sinasabi, afflictive, uh, reclusion, perpetua, blah, 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 hanggang prison mayor. Less grave is uh, PASD, di ba? Uh, prison correctional or uh, arresto mayor. So pag siya ay light, the other one is light. No. It's not a complex crime. Notice sa complex crime proper, when an offense is a necessary means to commit another. What is the meaning of necessary means? Is it indispensable means? Is necessary means this the same as that of an indispensable means? No, it is not. If it is an indispensable means to commit another, that's already an element of the crime. Since it's an element of the crime, it is not a complex crime. So this is just 
not an indispensable means, but only a necessary means to commit another crime. No? And what is the penalty? The penalty is for the most serious crime imposed the same in its maximum period. A person, Limbaw, si Barangay Chairman, minerder ni X, galit si X. So the crime is uh, uh, direct assault since he's a Barangay Chairman with murder. Complex with murder. Okay. So pinatay niya si Chairman. No? Pinagsasaksak niya. Okay. Sinaksak o binaril niya, patay. Single act that produced two or more grave or less grave felonies. So that's a complex crime. Now question, between direct assault and murder, which one is the most serious crime? Murder. So the penalty for murder shall be imposed upon him and impose it into its maximum period. Eh saan? Paano sir kung merong ano, mitigating circumstance of plea of guilt or voluntary surrender notwithstanding, it will not affect the imposition of the penalty. Hindi ba ba ba? Why? Because this is what we call walang rule of offsetting because this is what we call as special aggravating circumstance. Whenever there is a complex crime, compound complex crime, or a uh, complex crime proper. The penalty is for the most serious crime. Determine which one is the most serious crime between those crimes and impose it to its maximum period regardless of the presence of any uh, mitigating circumstances. Uh, bigyan na lang natin example. Sige. Illustrate ko na lang. Si A uh, Through a hand grenade. Killing B. Is there a complex crime? Wala. No? Kasi when a single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave, kung si B namatay, si C, a bystander, also dead. There is a complex crime. No? This is a grave offense. Namatay si B, namatay si C. Because of the single act of throwing a hand grenade. O, oh, yun. Sumabog. Napatay ang throwing. Okay. Uh, namatay si B, no, pero si C nabuhay. B suffered only slight physical injury. Is there a complex crime? Wala. Bakit? One is a grave felony. C, a slight physical injury is only a light felony punishable by arrest of minor, which is between one day to uh, 30 days. No? Matandaan yun. So, wala siyang uh, complex crime. E paano, sir? Si B namatay, si C suffered slight physical injury. Meron pang namatay na si D, less in peace. Is there a complex crime? Yes. Why? Because it already satisfies na two or more grave or less grave felonies. Namatay si B, namatay si D. Regardless of whether another person suffered slight physical injury or not. Okay, let's go to the second point. When it is a necessary means to commit another. Again, uh, let me just emphasize, this is not an element of the crime. Not indispensable means. If it is an element of the crime, then forget about the application of complex crime. Okay. Estafa 
a complex crime of Estafa through falsification of uh, falsification of a uh, public instrument and Estafa through falsification of a private uh, document. So, ang tanong, is there a complex crime of Estafa through falsification of a public document? Is there an Estafa through falsification of a private uh, document. Elements of estafa, uh, uh, essential ingredient is uh, uh, damage. Okay, essential. Yeah, uh. difference between falsification of a private document from that of a public document. In a public document, uh, Damage is not an element, but a private document, damage is an element. So, uh, between the two, okay, there is falsification. The, the, the document falsified is a public document. That's it. That's all, that's all the elements of the crime. In, in private, falsification of a private document, there's a document uh, falsified, and the document falsified is a private document. And that he suffered damage. No? So, which one is easier to prove? Public document. Kasi wala ka na kailangan i-prove the damage. Private document, uh, kailangan private document at uh, i-prove ng prosecution ng damage. So, damage in this case is an ingredient or an element of the crime. Estafa, damage is also an ingredient and indispensable element of estafa. Ergo, is there an estafa through falsification of a private document? None. Why? Because it is not a necessary means. Damage is an essential uh, ingredient. Also, private document. Damage is an essential uh, ingredient. No? So, walang ganon. Well, there is no complex realm of estafa through falsification of a private document. Sir, is there estafa through falsification of a public document? Yes, because damage in a public document is not an essential element of the crime. It is just a necessary means to commit another. So in this case, there is a staff, a complex crime of estafa through falsification of a public document. Okay. Uh, yun na siguro yan. Uh, may tanong sa bar. Uh, gumamit ng trigger uh, ng uh, automatic gun. I think you read this naman sa book ni Justice Reyes. So in the use of an automatic gun, said the court, the Supreme Court declared that it is not the act of pressing the trigger which should produce several felonies, but the number of bullets which actually produce them. Thus, when uh, A, with the use of fully automatic uh, M14 submachine gun, shot a group of persons with one burst of successive or continuous automatic fire, there are as many uh, crimes as persons. So A is criminally liable for first four cases of murder. So hindi pe pwedeng isa lang uh, ang, uh, ano, ang crime. Kasi ang ginawa ng trial court dito, there's only one crime committed by A. Why daw? Because isang ako lang. The act of pressing the trigger. Pero sabi ng, ng uh, Supreme Court, it is, the act of, it is not the act of pressing the trigger. But the number of bullets which actually produce death. And since because uh, four uh, persons died, then there are four cases of murder. Next. Preventive imprisonment deducted from the term of imprisonment. This is taken from RA 10592, no? amending Article 2 of the Revised Penal Code. Sinasabi lang dito, but just the codal provision, okay na yung ano lang. Uh, full time during which they have undergone preventive imprisonment credit in the service of their sentence. Offenders or accused who have undergone preventive imprisonment shall be credited in the service of their sentence. Alimbawa, um, 
wala siyang pangpiyansa. Uh, uh, he was uh, charged with the crime of homicide. And he has no money to post bond, no, no property. So he became a detention prisoner for failing to post a uh, bond for his temporary liberty. Now, uh, during the trial, it, it um, four years had elapsed. Four years had elapsed no, uh, before the trial convicted him. So during those four years, he was under detention. He was a detention prisoner. So those four years no, that he was under preventive imprisonment, being a detention prisoner, no, will be credited depending on the circumstances. Pwedeng pwedeng minus doon sa penalty. Nambawa, the penalty is uh, reclusion uh, temporal. It's also track ang four uh four years that he was under detention prisoner provided no provided full time in four years na yon will be credit in the service of the sentence no if the number one if the detention prisoner agrees voluntarily in writing to abide by the same discipline discipline disciplinary rules imposed upon convicted prisoners no except kung siya ay recidivist or has been or has been convicted previously twice or more times of any crime or when he was summoned for the execution of sentence he failed to voluntarily surrender pwede ring i-credit ang forfeit no kung he if the prisoner does not agree to abide by the, the same disciplinary rules imposed upon the convicted prisoners. He will do so in writing with assistance of a counsel and he shall be credited in the service of his sentence with four fifths no? during which he have undergone preventive imprisonment. So, dalawa lang yung full time kung nag-agree siya voluntarily in writing to, volunt to abide by the same disciplinary rules. Kung ayaw niya, four fifths will be credited. Okay? Ngayon, halimbawa, ang penalty for the crime that he committed is prison correctional. No? Six months, one day to six years. Hindi pa tapos ang trial nyo, naka seven years na siya. O, you apply the second paragraph. Whenever an accused has undergone preventive imprisonment for a period equal or more than the ma possible maximum imprisonment. What is the, uh, the possible maximum imprisonment? For a particular, in simple theft, prison correctional, six, uh, only six years, eh, seven years na wala pang decision ng court. No, ang mangyayari, he shall be released immediately. Released immediately without prejudice to the continuation of the trial thereof or the proceeding on appeal. Okay. Subsidiary penalty. Ang tatanong ang... ang Tatandaan nyo doon, uh, this is only applicable to penalty is fine. Hindi siya mag a apply sa civil liability. Also, applicable when it is expressly stated in the sentence. Na if in case he fails to pay the fine, he shall undergo uh, uh, imprisonment of one day equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate. Okay? The law provides that if the uh, Article 39, if the convict had no property with which to meet the fine, not civil liability, no? fine lang ito, any fine, he no? shall be subject to a subsidiary personal liability of the rate of one day uh, for each amount equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate prevailing in the Philippines. So, hindi siya 8 pesos. One day, equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate prevailing at the time of the uh, rendition of judgment. Tatandaan nyo, eh, alam bawa, pinakita sa bar, hindi siya nakabayad ng kanyang civil liability. O pwede ba siya mag-undergo ng subsidiary pen, uh, personal li liability? No. Again, as I've said, not applicable to civil liability. Only applicable to fine. Now, 
nakalagay sa bar, was not able to pay the fine. No, uh, 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 nakalagay, uh, the fine is, uh, alam ba, sentenced to prison. Uh, uh, there's a penalty imposed upon him. Uh, alam ba, is uh, prison correctional. No? That's it. A fine of prison correctional. Period. Hindi siya nakabayad ng fine. I'm sorry, be fine, merong prison correctional, tapos be fine ba na nakalagay na halimbawa uh, 20,000 pesos? Hindi siya nakabayad ng 20,000 pesos na fine. Can he be required to undergo subsidiary penalty one day equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate? Hindi. Why? Because it is not expressly stated in the sentence. Dapat nakalagay ganito. Okay, he sentenced to pay a fine of 20,000. And if dapat may nakalagay, hahanapin nyo sa bar, dapat nakalagay sa sentence expressly stating that just in case the accused, uh, the convict fails to pay the fine, then he is required to undergo subsidiary uh, penalty of one day equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate. Period. Dapat meron quote and an unquote. Pag walang quote and an unquote, then this is not applicable. Applicable when it is expressly stated in the sentence. One day for each amount equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate. No? Now, there are other provisions under Article 39 you need to memorize. No? Kung ang um, principal penalty imposed be prison correctional, arresto and fine, no? nakalagay dito is that his subsidiary imprisonment shall not exceed one-third of the term of the sentence. And no case shall it continue for more than one year. Yung mga conditions na to lumabas, lumabas in the pass of bar. So you need to murmurize. No? Murmurize nyo ito. No? Uh, PAF, prison correctional, arresto, or end fine, shall not exceed, yung subsidiary imprisonment niya shall not exceed one-third of the term of the sentence and in no case shall it exceed for more than one year. When the principal penalty imposed be fine only, walang imprisonment, fine lang. Sabi ng batas, the subsidiary imprisonment shall not exceed six months if the culprit shall have been prosecuted for grave or less grave felonies. Pangka naman uh, for light felonies shall not exceed 15 days. Tatandaan nyo. So kung fine lang yan, ang choices dyan is either uh, shall not exceed 6 months or shall not exceed 15 days. Shall not exceed 6 months kung prosecuted for a grave or less grave felonies. Meaning to say, capital afflictive or correctional penalties. Shall not exceed 15 days for light penalty felony. Meaning arrest of menor lang yan. Di ba? Okay. When the principal penalty imposed is higher than a uh, prison correctional. Principal penalty. Baka lituhin kayo. Is higher than prison correctional. Ano ba higher than prison correctional? Prison mayor pataas. Ang nakalagay, no subsidiary imprisonment shall be imposed upon the culprit. Baka lituhin kayo. Prison mayor ay ninimpose. Tapos uh, may fine. Hindi siya nakabayad. Nakalagay, no subsidiary imprisonment shall be imposed upon the culprit. Okay. Threefold rule. No, threefold rule is uh, under uh, the second part of Article 70. Ito yung successive service of sentence. No? Uh, the, it, it, it just enumerated the uh, se Severity of penalties under 70. Ayan. Pero nakalagay dito, yung notwithstanding the provisions of the next preceding uh, uh, next ito yan ah. The the maximum duration of the convict sentence shall not be more than threefold the length of 
time corresponding to the most severe uh, of the penalties imposed upon him. Okay? No other penalty to which he may be liable shall be inflicted uh, after the sum total of those equals the same period. Such maximum period shall in no case exceed 40 years. Again, no, this is successive service of sentence. No, in, in impose sa kanya, ito as uh, guilty of several crimes. No, the maximum duration of the convict sentence shall not be more than threefold the length of time corresponding to the most severe of the penalties upon him. Okay. So it is settled that the threefold rule is applied not in the imposition of the penalties but in connection with the service of sentence. The court is mandated to impose all the penalties for all the crimes for which the accused is found guilty. It is only in the service of the time of the same that they shall not exceed three times the most severe and shall not exceed 40 years. Ibig sabihin, impose mo muna lahat ng, penal ng penalties. No? So, ang triple rule mag apply na lang in the service of the sentence, no? At hindi dapat sila mag-exceed three times the most severe. It shall not exceed three times the most severe. So, dapat malaman nyo ano ba yung pinaka most severe, no? And shall not exceed 40 years. Okay? So, whichever is favorable, no? Basta bumaba ang sentensya, ah, uh, yun ang gagamitin, no? Sabi daw, shall not exceed three times the most severe and shall not exceed 40 years. Okay. Uh, alimbawa, two, two years, there should be at least four sentences dito. Let's go to illustration A. First sentence, two years. Second, two years. Third sentence, two years. Uh, the fifth is five years. Itotal mo yan, 11. Di ba? Pero minultiply mo yung each, 5 times 13, 15. Product of the most severe penalty. Which one is the most favorable to the accused? Yung sum total. You maintain that. No? So mag apply siya ngayon dito sa favorable sa letter B. No? 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6. 21 years ang sum total. Which is the most severe among the four penalties imposed upon him? 6 years. 6 years, i-multiply mo ng 3. 18 years. So as between 18 to 21, uh, which one is uh, uh, favorable to the accused? This one. Diba? Uh, ito. Uh, 6. 5, 5. Tingnan mo yung pinaka most severe. Multiply mo ng 3. 18. As between 18 and 21, si ano mas favorable? Ito. This is the application of the threefold rule. Pero kung applying the threefold rule, eh, mas mapataas pa yung penalty niya. Huwag mo apply. No? Patulad dito, 2, 2, 2, 5. Oh, 5 is the most severe. Multiply mo ng 3. 15. Eh, kung inad mo lang, 11 years. So, ito ang mag apply Favorable. Ito naman, mag apply 18 years no? sa pag-apply. We apply the threefold tool. Special uh, time allowance for loyalty. Tapusin natin ito bago tayo mag part 3. Uh, 98. Uh, deduction, 150. Two fifth, no. Uh, a deduction of one fifth for the period of his sentence shall be granted to any prisoner who, having evaded his preventive imprisonment or the service of sentence under the circumstance mentioned under one five eight, no, gives himself up to the authorities within forty eight hours. So, nagkaroon ng earthquake, kalami, ng ng conflagration, 
No, lumabas siya. Kasi nanganganin ang buwan niya. Pero bumalik siya. Within 48 hours, following the issuance of the proclamation, no, na yung calamity had already passed away. Dapat. Within 48 hours, uh, uh, following the issuance that the, passi- that the calamity had passed away, babalik siya. Dada, mababawa siya ng, siya ng one-fifth of the period of his sentence. Okay. Meron pang deduction of two-fifth. This which is the subject of the amendment. Uh, a deduction of two-fifths two of the uh, period of his sentence shall be granted in case said prisoner choose to stay in the place of his confinement, notwithstanding the existence of a calamity or catastrophe. No, in uh, Dati, may reason yan eh. Pag under 158, uh, nagkaroon ng calamity, conflagration, lumindol, Pag hindi ka lumabas, walang deduction. Ang ang purpose noon ay teka, ay safety mo sarili mo. Pero ngayon, ah uh, kung dadatili ka doon, no? Nag earthquake pero hindi ka umalis, andun ka pa rin, no? You will have a deduction of two fifths of the period of your sentence. Okay? Next. Habitual delinquency. Let me illustrate this one. If within a period of 10 years from his last release or conviction, he commits the crime of what? Serious or less serious physical injuries, robbery, theft, estafa, falsification a third time or often. So who is a person deemed to be had if within a period of 10 years Mr. Joselito pakimute ng iyong thank you 10 years from his last release or last conviction he commits the crime of serious, less serious, physical injuries, robbery, theft, estafa, falsification. How many times? A third time or oftener. He is deemed to be habitual delinquent. So, ang tanong ba? Ang habitual delinquency the same as that of recidivism? No. You cannot see this in any of the article, uh, any of uh, Subnumbers under Article 14. The uh, habitual delinquency is not an aggravating circumstance. Yes, res- for recid- recidivism. Question: Distinguish the deli- uh, deli- habitual delinquency from recidivism. Okay. Uh, from crimes committed, period of times are committed, number of crimes, and blah, blah, blah. As I've said, yung number one, kanina, sinabi ko na habitual delinquency is not an aggravating circumstance under Article 14. Recidivism is uh, an aggravating circumstance under Article 14. What else? Number two. Uh, since recidivism is false under Article 14 of the Revised Penal Code, then the effect of recidivism is to increase the penalty to its maximum period. In habitual delinquency, no, uh, the penalty is not increased to its maximum period. But the law provides that in habitual delinquency, additional penalty is to be meted out. No, additional penalty, but not to increase it to its maximum period. Distinction, other distinction uh, in recidivism, uh, it, uh, alam na natin ang recidivism, no? Uh, dapat yon uh, embrace in the same. There's a uh, previous conviction which is embrace in the same title of the code, no? Sa habitual delinquency, no? Hindi not necessarily kasi ang importante don ay yung mga crimes that I enumerated a while ago: serious, less serious, robbery, theft, falsification. Uh, period of time. No, 
In recidivism, there must be a previous conviction by final judgment of the first crime at the time of trial of the second crime. No? Merong previous conviction. In habitual delinquency, sinabi ko kanina, 10 years from the date of his release or last conviction. Number of crimes committed sa recidivism, dapat at least two crimes. Previous conviction and the crime that is now uh, on trial. In habitual delinquency, at least three crimes are committed. No? Kasi sabi ng batas, a third time or offender. As to their effects in relation to the uh, penalty imposed in recidivism, uh, if present, as again, I've said that it should be imposed to its maximum period unless it is offset by an ordinary mitigating circumstance. In habitual delinquency, it cannot be offset by any of the uh, mitigating circumstances, uh, but there is the imposition of an additional penalty for the third or subsequent uh, commission pursuant to Article 62 of the Revised Penal Code. Okay, so uh, you can turn off, AC, turn off, please, the lecture. The unrecorded video. Uh, when we go back after. AC, paki-accept pa, AC. Good afternoon, sir. Yes po din. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon po, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. start at exactly 105. So you already received your schedule in the bar exams? Na, yes. Diba? Laba na. Yes, Dean. Okay na, excited na. Next year, lawyer na kayo. Just uh, keep the faith. No? Kunti na lang yan. Lahat, lahat may hangganan. Diba? Hindi naman... Hindi naman Buong taon ay mag-aaral kayo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hanggang November lang yung araw na yun. Sa December, masaya na kayo. Ba? Kaya you do everything today and uh, until November, December, pwede na kayo magliwaliw. Okay, so I think it's already 1.05. Uh, AC, can you already record? Yes. Opo. Okay. Part three of the uh, the last part of my second lecture, the lecture I've done last uh, week. So this is extinction of criminal liability. Okay. Uh, extinction of pagsinabing, how is criminal liability extinguished? Do not start by saying by death and so forth and so on. You indicate first no, there are two ways. Total extinction of criminal liability as well as partial extinction of criminal liability. And the total extinction of criminal liability no, we have the following, pursuant to Article uh, 89, the death of the convict, no, as to personal penalties and as to pecuniary penalties, liability therefore is extinguished only when the death of the offender occurs before final judgment. Maraming bar questions dito. No? Liability is extinguished only when the death of the offender occurs before final judgment. So if death occurs after final judgment, then uh, it's not extinguished. So this was the subject of the bar exam no, in uh, 2015. So nakalagay dito, it says, uh, applying this principle to the facts of the case, Tiburcio died after the CA the Court of Appeals had already issued an entry of judgment. Meaning to say, uh, the decision has already become final and executory. Of course, criminal liability is extinguished. However, this civil liability is not extinguished, but it survives. Why? Because his death occurs after final judgment. Okay, so ito na yung leading question. Assuming that Tiburcio's death occurred before the CA rendered its decision, will your answer be the same? Yes, the answer will be different. Why? Because uh, uh, Tiburcio's death uh, occurred before the, C before the Court of Appeals rendered its decision. It will extinguish not only his criminal liability, but his civil liability based on delic as well okay pero we're, we're talking about civil liability here arising from delic no if the same also predicated on other source of uh, obligation other than delic such as law contracts quasi contracts and quasi delics then uh, you can claim the same so after that we got service of uh, sentence, amnesty. Uh, amnesty looks backward. No? Uh, uh, it erases all the uh, yung, uh, uh, crimes, uh, liability uh, by the offender. So, alam nyo naman na sa amnesty, uh, there is no need for a uh, conviction. Unlike in soft uh, let us have, uh, let's uh, look into the suggested answer in this part question. The settled principle that amnesty looks backward and abolishes and puts into oblivion the offense itself. You know? So it overlooks and obliterates the offense with which he is charged 
that the person released by amnesty stands before the law uh, precisely as though he had not committed any offense. No? So uh, amnesty completely extinguishes the penalty and all its effects. So in this case, amnesty erased the crime of rebellion that uh, the accused and terror committed in its legal effects. Okay, the crime of evasion of sentence for which which is an of uh, uh, were an option of the crime of rebellion which had been completely extinguished by the grant of amnesty to him. So amnesty obliterates not only the basis of conviction but also all the legal effects. Absolute pardon uh, extended by the president and when there's an absolute pardon, uh, there should uh, first be a conviction. And let's be just go to the ano, no, suggested answer. Uh, pardon looks forward. No? Unlike in amnesty, it looks backward. It relieves the offender from the consequences of an offense uh, of which she has been convicted. However, under Article 36 of the RPC, a pardon shall not work the restoration. Katulad sinabi natin kanina. No? A pardon shall not work the restoration of the right to hold office unless such right be expressly restored by the terms of the pardon. No? In this case, since the term of the pardon extended by the President of the Philippines have not expressly restored Senator Adamo's right to hold public office or remitted the accessory penalty of perpetual absolute disqualification, then he cannot run in a senatorial race. Alam naman natin na ang reclusion perpetua carries the perpetual absolute disqualification. Now, if it's uh, if if it's not uh, uh, pardon, but what is extended is amnesty. Can he run? Amnesty is applicable to political offenses. Since rebellion is a political offense, amnesty extended to Senator Adamus is proper. Okay, so uh, in so far as amnesty is extended, no, it will not only extinguish. The principal penalty no, of uh, reclusion perpetua, but also the accessory penalty of perpetual absolute disqualification. So, pagkaganon, no, the advice is that he is qualified to run in the senatorial race. Again, if that is amnesty that is extended. If it's absolute pardon, no. Okay. So, of course, we have prescription of the crime and prescription of the penalty. Uh, prescription of the crime is uh, inability of the state to prosecute the offense. Inability of the state to prosecute the offense, prescription of the penalty, inability of the state to execute the sentence. So, prescription of the penalty there's already a penalty uh, rendered by the court. Seven is uh, marriage of the offended party. So, and then you know how is criminal liability extinguished? So, those are the enumerations. Again, death of the accused, of service of sentence, amnesty, ab absolute pardon, a prescription of the crime, prescription of the penalty, as well as marriage of the offended woman. So prescription of crimes, I think you need to you need to memorize this. Afflictive penalties, uh, no crimes uh, by death, reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, temporal, twenty years. Afflictive penalties, no, until uh, reclusion perpetua, until reclusion, uh, until prison mayor, fifteen years. Correctional penalty, uh, okay. Uh, Prison correctional, it should be 10 years. Arresto mayor, shall prescribe in five years. 
libel one year, oral defamation, slander by deed six months, and light offenses in two months. Okay, computation of prescription of offenses. Maraming beses tinanong sa bar. The period of uh, prescription shall commence to run from the day on which the crime is discovered by whom? By the offended party, uh, authorities, or their agents. No? So we're talking about a uh, person in authorities or agents. When you talk about discovered by the offended party, it, uh, uh, it encompasses also discovered by the relatives of the offended party. If it is discovered by the, just a stranger, it will not uh, uh, commence to run. It will only commence to run if you reported the same to the person in authority or <coughs> or about to the agents like yung uh, mga police officers. Uh, alam naman natin yung persons in authority is one which, uh, uh, which exercises jurisdiction. Like a mayor, no? <coughs> governor agents of a person is uh, of a person authority are those uh, charged with the maintenance of public peace and uh, public order and safety like a police officer dapat sa kanila uh, uh so surrender so kung ko surrender kung naka kung ang naka discover ay uh, relative uh, discovery by the defendant party pag neighbor hindi hindi it will record until uh, ni report sa uh, persons in authority or agents kung ni report lang kay uh, Rafi Tulpo hindi because it's not a, a personal authority or agents so it will record from the time uh, Rafi Tulpo uh, um, relayed the matter to the to the police officers diba? doon lang magraran yun so the discovery we call it discovery rule no uh, it commence that the period of prescription commences to run from the date of the commission of the crime of course the general rule is no if it is known to everyone no it it will commence to run on the date of the commission pero kung ito ay secretly or uh, clandestinely committed that's the time where the discovery rule will apply no dito sa example given the crime was clandestinely committed ibig sabihin secretly committed hence the period of prescription will the date well, the crime was reported by dominador to the public authorities no doon lang siya mag uh, bibilang Okay, uh, penalties, computation of prescription. Okay. Uh, partial extinction of criminal liability. Partial extinction uh, is CCG. Conditional pardon, commutation of sentence, good conduct allowances. Conditional pardon, it's not an expressed absolute pardon. There are certain conditions to meet. And if these conditions are not met, then uh, invalidate your conditional pardon. Commutation or lessening of sentence exercised by the President of the Philippines. Good conduct may earn while he's undergoing uh, preventive imprisonment or serving sentence. Okay. Okay, let's go to civil liability. Every person criminally liable is also Can everyone hear me? Okay. So, kasi nakalagay yes, judge. no sound. Yes. Hindi po ako judge. Yes, yes din. <laughs> yes, yes, din. Yes, din. Yes, din. Justice din. Justice, justice. Okay. Uh, Article 100, every person criminally liable for a felony is also civilly liable. So ang tanong, every person not criminally liable is also not civilly liable. Tama ba? Mali. That's wrong. Because a person may not be criminally liable but he is also civilly liable. 
Like for example, in an exempting circumstance, no, in, in exempting circumstances, we explained that uh, last week that even if uh, there's no crime committed, as a general rule, there is civil liability. No? Or if uh, the acquittal is based on reasonable doubt, then there could be a civil liability. Okay. So if there are 10 separate uh, counts of crimes, like in this case, 10 separate counts of rape, it necessarily follows that there should be 10 separate imposition of civil indemnity. Article 102, subsidiary civil liability of innkeepers, tavern keepers, proprietors, establishment. So a uh, codal provision lang hindi naman to, I, I, I hope that you'll be able to memorize this one. Innkeepers are also uh, civilly, subsidiarily liable you know, for the restitution of goods taken by robbery or theft within their houses. So limited lang yun sa robbery or theft. You know? Provided the conditions are following. Yung guests dapat na nag-notify sila in advance, uh, the inner, uh, innkeeper himself. You know? anong, in, anong notified uh, in advance? of the deposit of such goods within the inn. Okay? And secondly, they should follow the directions which such innkeeper or his representative they have given them. No? So, dalawa lang yon, Notification and follow the directions. No? And then, but they're not criminally liable. And they're not uh, also subsidiary liable if uh, the robbery with violence against or intimidation of persons are committed by strangers. So, tagalabas. No liability shall attach in case of robbery with violence against or intimidation of persons unless committed by the innkeeper's employees. Ibig sabihin, no liability insofar as robbery with violence against or intimidation of persons uh, committed by a stranger. No, but they will be liable if the robbery with violence against or intimidation of persons are committed by the innkeeper's employees. No, kasi empleyado nila yun. No, yun na siguro yun. What civil liability includes? RRI, restitution, reparation, indemnification. Restitution. No, the restitution of the thing itself must be made whenever uh, possible. So kung na-snatchan ka ng isang uh, uh, bracelet, kailangan ibalik sa yung bracelet. No? You restitute. Kung di na kaya, nawala na, naibenta na yung, yung uh, gold na uh, bracelet, then uh, the court shall determine the amount of the damage taking into consideration the price of the thing. Magkano ba equivalent value ng nawalang bracelet? Or it's special sentimental value ng injured party. Binana ko pa to sa magulang ko eh. Di ba? Sa kalalolulohan ko eh. So make sure, ang sabihin nyo, special sentimental value. Ano? Hindi yung special mental value. Walang mental value. Sentimental, meron. Okay? So we also have indemnification. No? for consequential damages no it shall not include only those cause the injured party but also those suffered by his family or by a third person by reason of the crime so mga may mga damages no extinction okay na yan okay so tapos na tayo with respect to uh, criminal law 1 I think uh, exhaustive main discussion natin. No? So I think we'll be go now to special penal laws. Okay. Medyo mahaba ito.
Can you see this class? Can you see this? <clears throat> Indeterminate sentence law. We've discussed that a while ago. Well, just a reminder, perhaps. If a special penal law adopts the nomenclature of penalties of the RPC, then this law will be applicable. The, the rule that shall be used to obtain the maximum and the mini minimum term of the indeterminate sentence is that of the revised penal code and not of the RPC. Like as I've said a while ago, uh, child abuse, which is 7610, adopted the penalties defined in RPC and so therefore we apply the rule of offsetting. No, we apply the rule in so uh, to get the maximum as well as the minimum term of the indeterminate sentence. Uh, the rules applied to the revised penal code. As I've said, imposition of the indeterminate sentence is mandatory in criminal cases, except those which were mentioned a while ago except those which falls under the disqualifications. Uh, uh, again, just for purposes of review, uh, these are the uh, uh, okay. uh, huh? uh, punishable by imprisonment, uh, by death, like imprisonment or uh, reclusion perpetua, all the reasons out there. Okay. Treason, conspiracy, or proposal of will to commit treason, mistreason of treason, rebellion, sedition, espionage, piracy, habitual delinquence, escape from confinement, conditional pardon, and violated the same. Maximum period of imprisonment does not exceed one year. Those already finding, uh, serving final judgment. So you don't have to compute if these are present. So pagkalimbawa ang penalty is less than six, less than one year. Uh, straight penalty imposed nyo. Pwede nyo imposed ng six months uh, and one day. Pero walang maximum of period ng two months. Uh, walang minimum period of two months to six months. Walang minimum period of six months to 11 months. Walang ganon, just impose a straight penalty because the penalty does not exceed one year. However, if it exceeds one year, uh, you need to, uh, the court the, uh, needs to impose an indeterminate sentence as a rule. So if it's, he cannot impose just three years and one day. He must impose a penalty of minimum blank and maximum blank. No? Because it is mandatory, as I mentioned earlier. The law is not applicable if the penalty is necessary because it does not involve any imprisonment. Just a review of uh, the rule. Pagayan yan, di ba? Pababa. Maximum term and uh, okay, let me use my um, pen. Uh, maximum term shall not exceed the maximum fixed law. law. Uh, minimum shall not exceed the minimum fixed by law. RPC, how do you get the maximum term? Rule of offsetting. Okay, appreciation of the mitigating and aggravating. Ito, one degree lower. Uh, the period of which is upon the discretion of the court. Cut and paste as I've said. Okay. So again, just a reminder that uh, rule of upsetting, the rules of upsetting are not applicable to special penal laws. We do not appreciate the presence of any uh, aggravating or mitigating circumstances. So again, if the maximum term arrived 
and it does not exceed one year, Islam will not apply. If the sentence uh, imposed by the court is 12 years and one day for violation of the Comprehensive Drugs Act, is that proper? No, because kailangan, the court should have uh, set the minimum as well as the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Uh, we have discussed this a while ago. Yes, you can uh, appreciate the, if it's a privilege mitigating. So if it's reclusion perpetua, appreciate the privilege mitigating, then you would go into reclusion temporal, which is now a uh, divisible penalty. If uh, you arrive at a divisible penalty, you may now appreciate the presence of ordinary mitigating and generic aggravating. Let's go to the probation law. Probation law do not interchange the disqualifications of probation law from that of the Islam. So what are the purposes of probation? Uh, promote the uh, correction and rehabilitation of an offender by providing him with individualized treatment and provide an opportunity for the reformation of a penitent offender which must, might be less probable if he were to serve a prison sentence. Prevent the commission of offenses. So uh, a probation of a um, probationer, even if he's accused, even if he's convicted, he will not go to jail. Only that he will have to report to the probation officer. But he needs to uh, meet the conditions of his probation. And if he violates any of those conditions, then he will have to serve the sentence originally imposed. Sa, pro, sa islaw, pag nag-violate siya sa islaw, he will have to serve the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence. Sa probation, nag-violate siya ng kanyang probation, he will have to serve the sentence originally imposed. So during the time that he was... Uh, under probation, it will not be credited for him. No? Dapat, kung anong original sentence imposed, yun ang bunuhin niya. Not all may avail of uh, probation. As I've said, do not uh, uh, interchange the disqualifications of probation from that of Islam. So probation ay nag- uh, uh, sentenced to serve a maximum term of imprisonment of more than six years. Meaning to say, the penalty is prison mayor. Ano bang prison mayor? Six years and one day to 12 years. Simula sa prison mayor, hindi na siya pwedeng uh, mag-avail ng probation. Convicted of any crime against national security. So ang rebellion, pwedeng maging uh, you can avail of uh, probation for rebellion for as long as the penalty is not more than six years. No? Because uh, rebellion is, is not a crime against national security. It's a crime against public order. And because of RA 10707, no? it removes the uh, crimes against public order as a disqualification in probation. Uh, previously convicted by final judgment of an offense punished by imprisonment of more than six days, more than six months, and one day, or a fine of 1,000 pesos. Or you have been on probation before, okay, or been serving sentence at the time this was uh, uh, took effect who has perfected an appeal from the judgment of conviction. So many questions in the uh, bar examination is based upon uh, here. So if a, if a person has already perfected an appeal from the judgment con of conviction, then he cannot avail of uh, probation. So mamimili lang siya, mag-appeal ba ako, magpa-probation. Pag probation, convicted ka. No? Pero hindi ka makukulong. Kung sa tingin niya ay talagang wala siyang kasalanan, he will file an appeal. Diba? Kasi may chance talaga na ma-lockwit siya. Or under the Comprehensive Drugs Act, 
any person convicted of drug trafficking or pushing regardless of the penalty imposed by the court so drug trafficking or pushing if the convict had already perfected an appeal an application for probation cannot be granted why because express provision of the law provides that no application for probation shall be entertained or granted no? if the defendant has perfected an appeal from the judgment of conviction. By perfecting an appeal, so dalawa lang yan. It's either appeal or uh, probation. Pag nag-file ka ng appeal, then na-ringwish mo na yung remedy of probation. Again, these are mutually exclusive remedies. File ka ng probation, wala ka ng appeal kasi uh, the sentence will become final and executory. Pag appeal naman, wala ka ng ikonet appeal of probation. Section 4 is uh, explicit in stating that the filing of the application for probation shall be deemed a waiver of the right to appeal. Uh, however, uh, yung waiver mo to right to appeal uh, is not a waiver of the civil liability arising from uh, delict. So it, it, it is not uh, civil liability is not included to the waiver to right to appeal. Uh, unlike in uh, probation in Islaw, di ba Islaw, applicable lang yan kung meron imprisonment. Ang probation applicable to both uh, a term of imprisonment or a fine only. When there's an order which grants the probation or which denies probation, it cannot be appealed anymore. No? Remedy mo, magsyarsarari ka. Pero you cannot file an appeal if there's an order granting the probation or an order denying the probation. So they are mutually exclusive remedies. No? Legal effect of probation, uh, as I've said, convi uh, the conviction becomes final already when the accused applies for probation. Uh, let's uh, go into uh, disqualifications. Sense, sentence to serve more than six years. May exception ba? Yung section 11 of uh, the Dr anti of the Comprehensive Drugs Act sa mga first-time offender. No? Na, nakalagay dito, if there's a violation of any condition, the court shall announce judgment of conviction. The court, however, may in its discretion place the accused on probation even if the sentence provided for under this act is higher than that provided under existing law on probation. So a first-time offender under Section 11 is an, uh, an exception to this. Another exception is that which is in People versus Colinares, appeal is allowed uh, uh, despite previous uh, 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 probation is allowed uh, despite appeal. No? Sabi ng court, uh, 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 Arnel did not appeal from a judgment that would have allowed him to apply for probation. He did not have a choice between appeal and probation. Bakit? Ang nangyari dito sa kay Colinari, he was convicted by the RTC of the crime of uh, frustrated homicide where the penalty is more than six years. So he filed an appeal. Now, in an appeal, hanggang umabot sa Supreme Court, now, the Supreme Court uh, sustained the judgment of conviction against Arnel, but uh, modified the decision. They lowered, the Supreme Court lowered the penalty imposed upon him. So sabi nila, erroneous ang judgment mo, RTC. Hindi dapat yan, frustrated homicide. 
dapat yan ay only attempted uh, homicide where the penalty is uh, I think two years and four months. Uh, so upon uh, uh, lessening of the penalty imposed upon him by the Supreme Court upon the receipt of the same, where the penalty is now uh, has become probationable, nag-file sa ng probation. Now this was opposed on the ground that hey, uh, you already filed a petition for probation uh, for uh, appeal before. Nag-file ka na ng appeal. You cannot avail of uh, any more of uh, uh, probation because this, they are mutually exclusive remedies. Sabi ng court, uh, the lower court, uh, may kasalanan ng lower court. No? Hindi dapat yan frustrated. Dapat yan ay uh, attempted only. No, penalty of two years and four months. Uh, sabi ng Supreme Court, kasalanan niya yan, RTC. What is clear is that had the RTC done what was right and imposed on Arnel the correct penalty of two years and four months, he would have the right to apply for probation. So doon na lang, kung tama ang inimpose nila, di meron dalawang option sana si si Colinares, si Abnel, either to file a probation or to file an appeal. Since the, pen, the erroneous penalty is more than six years, he is deprived of his chance to avail of uh, probation. No? In this case, he cannot because he, uh, of the erroneous judgment of the RTC. Hence, uh, appeal is allowed. Now, yung culinary doctrine, as I've said, is now under Section 4 of uh, uh, the Probation Law as amended by Republic Act 10707. In that, it states that no application for probation shall be entertained or granted if the defendant has perfected an appeal from the judgment of conviction. O, yun yun. Provided that when a judgment of conviction imposing a non-probationable penalty is appealed, katulad nito, more than six years in appeal sa taas, and such judgment is modified, naging two years and uh, four months, which is already a probationable penalty, you know, the defendant shall be allowed to apply for probation. And it is based on the modified decision before such a decision becomes final. National security. As I've said, probation may be available when the accused is convicted of rebellion because rebellion is not a crime against national security, it's a crime against public order. Period of probation. Sentence to a term of one year shall not exceed two years. Uh, memorizing nito, lumabas natin sa bar to. Sentence to a term of more than uh, one year shall not exceed six years. So, kung one year lang, dapat ang probation niya is hindi mag-exceed ng two years. Uh, pagka exceeding one year, dapat ang period of probation niya hindi higit sa anong na taon. Let's go to the Anti-Graft and Graft Practices Act. Okay, ang tatanong, tatandaan nyo lang yan, uh, no? sections 3, no? uh, nakalagay dito who are, who are uh, maybe liable under section 3 ng the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. So, public officers who committed acts enumerated under Section 3. Section 3 enumerates what are those acts. No? At uh, also, uh, private persons acting in conspiracy with the public officers. No? Even private persons may be liable if they acted in conspiracy with the public officers. Or if the private person induce or cause the public official to commit those offenses. Uh, 
Tandaan nyo 3B E G H. Pag sinabing 3B, ano yung ibig sabihin? Offender is a public officer who requested a, or received a gift, a present, or share percentage of benefit on behalf of the offender and the person in connection with the contract with the government in which the public officer in an official capacity under the law has the right to intervene. Okay. So letter B, dapat dyan, tatandaan nyo lang, sounds like, as what well, the public officer has the right to intervene. No? Uh, letter B, B, the right to intervene. So kahit na siya ay public officer, Even if he had intervened, he have intervened, but he has no right to intervene, then uh, he will not be liable under Section 3B. So, alimbawa lang, ha, kunyari lang, Secretary of Health nag-intervene no, sa, sa DPWH. Hindi naman, ang kontrata naman does not concern anything that relates to uh, the health sector. No? So, nag-intervene siya but in a personal capacity kasi ka, uh, kaibigan niya o kapatid niya yung contractor, then this is not applicable because the offender in this case is a public officer in an official capacity who has the right to intervene. Nabawa, siguro sa bits and awards, no, sa procurement officer, uh, nag-intervene siya. Pwede yan. Can a person be bought liable for uh, Section 3B and direct bribery? Yes, because the elements are not the same. No? Uh, the elements of the right to intervene is not an element in direct bribery. Although there are, sim there are similarities between them, but they are, it's not uh, identical. Okay, next. So after 3B, we have 3E. No? 3E. Ano bang 3E? Okay, public officer, of course, is the offender. Discharge siya ng duty niya. That the act was done with uh, manifest partiality, evident bad faith, or gross inexcusable. Uh, the uh, public officer caused any undue injury to any party including the government, o nagbigay siya ng unwarranted benefits, advantage, or preference. Basta importante dito, hindi nalulugi ang gobyerno, di ba? Okay. Let's go to 3B. Uh, Ashley, please uh, admit. Uh, 3B. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, nagulit na yan. 3 na tayo. In 3B, right to intervene. In this case, it's 3E. Ano bang, ano, simulan nyo sa E. Uh, evident uh, bad faith, uh, gross, uh, ENG na lang, manifest partiality, and gene, gross, inexcusable negligence. 3E, you start again with evident bad faith, manifest partiality, na, and gross, inexcusable inexcusable negligence. So, bad faith is not enough. no? For a person to be convicted under 3E, dapat ang bad faith niya is evident bad faith. Partiality, uh, partiality is not enough because it should be a manifest partiality. No? 
simple negligence is not enough kasi dapat it should be gross inexcusable negligence because of evident bad faith because of manifest partiality because of uh, gross inexcusable negligence anong nang anong nangyari nagkaroon ng dalawa you two and you uh, i'm sorry undo injury error it uh, resulted to an warranted benefits or advantage so you too yung emj niya evident bad faith manifest partiality gross and excusable negligence resulted in you too either undo injury kanino to any party including the government uh, or you, be, you gave uh, an unwarranted benefit to a private sector to the prejudice of the other parties. Uh, one example of this where a person, where a public officer was convicted was he's the head of a public business, uh, public uh, no, business uh, permit in one local government. Now, there was a, a company operating a business uh, operating within uh, that, that city. And that company applied for the renewal. So, eh, lahat naman, all uh, documents are uh, presented. There's the reason to deny the same. They have complied with all the requirements except that the head of the business permit sector you know, with evident bad faith refused to issue him to him a uh, business permit renewal of business permit. So this company filed a, a criminal case against the public officer because of uh, the evident bad faith of refusing to uh, renew their business license. They, uh, the company suffered uh, injury. So, uh, this is a decided case actually rendered by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said that because of that uh, evident bad faith on the part of the head of the uh, business permit sector, uh, the company suffered undue injury. Next. So, uh, yun, what is... Uh, Contextually is punishable is the act of causing undue injury to a any party or giving to any private person party of unwarranted benefit, advantage, or preference in the discharge of the public function. Okay. The accused may be charged under either mode or both. So, pwede yung evident ban fit lang, pwede yung manifest partiality lang, pwede yung gross inexcusable negligence, or pwede yung dalawa or all. Diba? So, when you say manifest partiality, it's synonymous with bias. When you talk about evident bad faith, there is a manifest deliberate intent on the part of the accused to do wrong or to cause damage. Okay. Ang tanong is, is undue injury in the context of Section 3E have a meaning akin to is, akin to civil law concept of actual damage? Yes. No? The court has treated undue injury in the context of Section 3E to have a meaning akin to the civil concept of actual damage. Okay. Gross inexcusable negligence, meaning it's not only uh, merely omission of duties, no, uh, but uh, or inadvertence, but a willful, it connotes also willful and intentional act 
with con with conscious uh, indifference to consequences in so far as other persons may be affected. As I said, there are two ways to do that. Uh, causing undoing injury in the government, including the government or giving any private party unwarranted benefit, advantage, or preference. So in order to be found guilty under the second mode, it suffices that the accused has given unjustified favor or benefit to another in the exercise of official, admin, or judicial functions. So like in one case where the private suppliers were all chosen by the public officer uh, without showing proof that their prices were the most beneficial to the government. Elements under 3G. Well, let's go now to Kanina. We discuss uh, three. Let's... Uh, Um, summarize lang yung three ano, summarize natin yung three three B no, officer a public official has the right to right to inter Bean sounds like so 3B. Uh, so B. B stands for evident bad faith, manifest partiality, thus inexcusable negligence that uh, caused you to undo injury, including to the government, and unwarranted. benefit or preference to a private person okay now we have 3g entering into a contract which is grossly and must manifestly disadvantageous to the government no pag 3eg entering into a govern into a contract which is grossly and manifestly disadvantageous to the government so it's not merely disadvantageous to the government but it should be gross as well as manifest okay let's continue uh, the requisites under three of course uh, it's a public officer he entered into a contract on behalf of the Philippines, as I've said, such contract or transaction is GMD, grossly and manifestly disadvantageous to the government. A private person, as, you, as I've said earlier, can be held criminally liable if they acted in conspiracy with the public officer. The lack of public bidding alone does not automatically equate to a manifest and gross disadvantage to the government. Kasi, di ba, pag may failed bidding ng dalawang beses, they can enter into a negotiated procurement allowed under the law. Uh, essential elements of the uh, said provisions. I think there are three. Trying to enter in. Uh, AC, AC, pa enter mo yung tatlo, kawawa naman. Okay po din. Hindi yung pakaus ko itong, ano, itong PBRC admin ko. Ha? Come again? Hindi yung pakaus po nitong PBRC admin ko. Ah, uh, okay. So, Thank you're you not... Uh, okay, so yeah. Let me check on your name. Stop mo muna yung recording ha. Hanapin ko yung name mo. Uh, 
check ko lang PBRC. Kasi I was the one, ad was the one admitting kahit ako yung nagle-lecture. AC, okay na? Yes po din, okay na po. Okay. So, let me go back. Start recording again. Okay, let's go to 3H. No? Essential elements of the following uh, set provisions. So we have three B, E, G, and H elements of this one. Public officer, he has a direct and indirect financial pecuniary interest in any business contract or transaction at yung ginawa niya ay uh, intervenes or takes part in his official capacity in connection with such interest. And he, he, or he is prohibited uh, by law from having interest uh, by virtue of the Constitution or by law. So, anong sabi? Anong H? When we talk about 3H. What does H mean? No? Uh, holding what? Interest. No, whether directly or indirectly with any business contract or transaction. Or oh, holding an interest which is uh prohibited by the constitution or by law di ba may mga uh, uh, constitutional provision against yung mga congressman and relatives niya of a particular uh, business interest kasama din so 3h means uh i i squared dalawang i Holding interest directly or indirectly with any business, contract, or transaction. Or holding interest which is prohibited under the Constitution or by law. So 3H is actually high. You know? Holding interest you know? prohibited under Constitution or law and interest uh, with a business contract or transaction. I'm sure. I hope na simplify ko sa and you were able to remember the same. Uh, the prescriptive period uh, for anti graft and corrupt uh, practices uh, was increased from 15 years to 20 years. Okay. Pag namatay ang co-conspirator, ibig sabihin ba ay uh, madismiss ang kaso? No. Uh, not necessary. No? The only thing uh, extinguished by the uh, uh, the disease here is this is criminal liability. It is uh, it does not extinguish the crime, nor did it uh, remove the basis of the charge of conspiracy between him and private respondent. This is a different end really. Uh, uh, yun. Were it not for his death, he should have been charged. Let's go to the Comprehensive Drugs Act. Ang tatandaan nyo lang dyan, illegal sale at uh, illegal possession at chain of custody. Kung may tatanong man sa bariyan, illegal sale, sale, possession, chain of custody. Kinakailangan ba yung uh, by bus money? Present, hindi. No? Ang importante the drugs itself, but not the by bus money. How do you differentiate sale from possession? Pag illegal sale, ito yun. Proof that the transaction or sale took place. How do you prove that uh, ano may elements ng transaction or sale? The concept, object, and the consideration. Diba? The concept may object, may consideration, or payment thereof. Okay. 
and that uh, presentation of evidence in court. Okay, so again, uh, let me lecture on this. We're talking about illegal sale. Pag sale, dapat alam yung uh, identity of the buyer, seller, the object, and consideration. Sinong buyer, alam mo? Alam mo seller? Alam mo kung ano? The, uh, illicit drugs, consideration, is yung pera. So dapat it took this uh, sale took place. But it does not end there. Kailangan presentation in court of the illicit drug. Illicit drug is the corpus delicti. So yung by bus money, hindi yung corpus delicti. Yung droga mismo, kailangan ipresenta. Pag hindi mo presenta sa court yan, this is isang kaso. No? Because you created doubt that it is the, as to whether that is really taken from the uh, uh, it was really the it's the subject of, of the sale. Uh, you mean to say in chain of custody? Alam niyo di ba? From the suspect, the 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 seize uh, drugs, suspect. Then you have the uh, 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 to the apprehending officer. From the apprehending officer to the investigating officer. Pasa pasa yan, ha? From the investigating officer to the forensic chemist. And lastly, from the forensic chemist to the presentation in court. The court, no? here must be uh, uh, guaranteed that the uh, sees that the drugs presented in court is the same drugs taken from the suspect kasi pinagpasapasahan niya no so you has the court has to be assured that the drugs presented in the courts no in the court is this are, are, are or is or are the same uh uh cis drugs taken from the suspect if there is doubt then the case will be dismissed throughout all these uh you know stages the court has to be convinced with Pi that uh, the evidentiary that uh, there is a preservation of the uh, the integrity and evidentiary value of the items. I stands for integrity, E for evidentiary value. Okay. So dito nga sa pag-suspect, di ba, dapat you will have to uh, 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 observe yung witnesses. No? Three witness rule. You have to observe also the inventory marking photographing either in the place where the crime was committed or in the nearest police station or in the office of the apprehending officer. So, yan yun ah. Parang na-advance ko na yung lecture. Pagka naman possession, okay, ano mga requisites? Of course, he was in possession of an object uh, identified to as a prohibited or regulated drug. Of course, you are not authorized by law to possess the same. And this is uh, important, freely and consciously aware of being in possession of the illicit drug. Okay. Uh, 
uh, freely and consciously aware of being in possession of the uh, God. No? There is animus posse dendi. No? Intent to possess the same. Next. Illegal possession of drugs. What, for, say, for example, if a person is apprehended for uh, two separate uh, prohibited uh, drugs, one is for illegal possession of shabu, one is a legal possession of marijuana committed at the same time and place. So isang tao na nakuha siya ng marijuana at sa kabilang packet ay shabu. Isang kaso, dalawang kaso. Prosecution would be correct in filing two separate informations, dalawang kaso, for illegal possession of shabu and illegal possession of marijuana. Although it was committed at the same time and in the same place. Next. When we say concept of possession, what does it mean? There is animus possidendi, as I've said. No? Animus possidendi. Intend to possess the same. So this is mala prohibita. Wala nga ang criminal intent. Pero the law provides as a requirement that there should be animus possidendi or the right to, the intent to possess the same. And of course, we know that uh, there are two types of possession which should either be actual or constructive possession. When you say constructive possession, the drug is under the control and dominion of the accused. He has the right to exercise dominion and control over the place. So the drugs were not found in his body but were found in a place where he has can exercise dominion and control, such as uh, the drugs, illicit drugs were found in his house. So mere possession of a regulated drug per se constitutes prima facie evidence of nanimus or possidendi. It will already create a prima facie evidence. So the burden of evidence is now shifted to the accused to explain the absence of knowledge or animus possidendi. Okay, I said that a while ago. Oh. If a person is found with uh, uh, kanina possession, possession of shabu and marijuana, ito naman, one is found to positive for the use of dangerous drugs, no? used, and isa naman is possession of dangerous drugs. Uh, will he be uh, filed with uh, use as well as possession, two separate crimes? No. Sabi ng batas, uh, shall not be applicable where the person tested is also found uh, such quantity of any dangerous drugs found for Section 7. It will, submit, it will only be filed with possession but not the use. The use is absorbed in possession. So in one case, no, uh, in in uh, by question, a person is arrested and charged of both uh, possession of shabu and marijuana. Okay, uh, for I'm sorry, charged of both pos uh, possession of shabu and use of marijuana. Ilan ang kaso? Pag use at possession, isa lang. No, so possession lang. Yung use. Uh, ano na, uh, absorb na ng possession. 
Pero kung parehong possession, possession, two separate crimes. Meaning ng chain of custody, uh, as yung kanina, yung sinabi ko na kanina, no, uh, from the suspect to the apprending officer, apprending officer to the uh, investigating officer, from the investigating officer to the forensic chemist, from the forensic chemist to uh, presentation in court. Oh, lahat yun, may mga link, di ba? So, the prosecution must prove that is able to account for each link of the chain of custody from the moment the drugs are seized up to the pre their presentation in court as evidence of crime. So, ano mga requirement? No? As part of the chain of custody, as I've said kanina, kailangan merong uh, uh, immediately after seizure and confis uh, confiscation, gawa siya ng uh, physical inventory, photographing, or the presence of the, the accused or his representative. And the, and the, three, and the uh, representative no? from the uh, elected public official or representative of the national prosecution. So, yun ang mga taong kinakalangan. No? After the amendment of RA 9165, elected public official and either representative ng prosecution or media. Dati, no, prior to the amendment, uh, ano yan, media, DOJ, elected official. Ngayon, ano lang, uh, elected official representative ng national prosecution or or ang nakalagay media so kinakailangan in uh, the presence of these witnesses to ensure the establishment of the chain of custody and remove any suspicion of uh, either switching panting or contamination of evidence strict compliance must be observed no. Okay, this is what I uh, mentioned a while ago. Yeah. So, kung hindi man na-follow yung procedure, alam bawa ang hindi na photograph o kulang isang tao, dapat justifiable yan. The court should be convinced that it was done uh, with justifiable ground. Pag sinabi mo lang hindi namin na-inform kasi umuulan, sabi ng Supreme Court sa mga pag umuulan, ay liable ka. Uh, may pagkukulang kayo. Dismiss ang kaso. So as I've said, dapat kung hindi man nag-comply, no, if this is asked in a bar question, ito sabihin yung justification no, ng prosecution. Uh, that compliance was based on justifiable grounds. Pinaligiran ng mga police ng mga may, may, may mga baril na makamag-anak. So they have to, uh, they cannot mark it in the place where it, is, where it was uh, seized. No? So it was done in the office of the uh, uh, apprending officer. Or secondly, uh, still the integrity or PI, the preserved integrity and evidentiary value of the item seized. Okay. So kinakailangan ipakita ang justifiable ground no? at evidentiary value had been preserved kung merong deviation dito sa compliance. Okay. Ano, sabi, ano ibig sabihin ng immediately after seizure and confiscation? Dapat gawa ka ng physical inventory, photographing, you know, at that place of apprehension. Pagka impracticable, doon malang gawin sa nearest police station o kaya uh, nearest office of the apprehending officer. Is ownership material for a person to be charged with a crime of illegal transportation of dangerous drugs? In, uh, okay. 
ang kinakailangan dito in transportation and the identity and integrity of the seized uh, items must be proved beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, it's immaterial kung sino ang may-ari may ng dangerous drug seize. No? What is important no, that is that the prosecution prove the act of transporting as well as the identity and integrity of the seized item. Presumption of regular performance of duty cannot still overcome, of course, the constitutional presumption of innocence because uh, this is uh, a constitutional provision, the fundamental law of the land, you know, the God of all laws. So decision of the Supreme Court declaring Section 23 of RA 9165 as unconstitutional no, for being contrary to Article 8, Section 55, in that it is only the Supreme Court who is authorized to allow plea bargaining. So, a person convicted of drug trafficking or pushing cannot avail of the benefits of probation. It does not follow that just because a person is convicted uh, under the Comprehensive Drugs Act, that if it's a facto, no, the person cannot avail of the benefit of probation. Kung illegal, kung illegal transportation lang, kung illegal possession lang, pwedeng mag-avail ng probation. No, ang disqualification lang ay kung siya ay nagbebenta, kung siya ay nagta-traffic or nagpupush ng bawal na gamot. No? Eh, paano, sir? Uh, he commits a crime. But, uh, uh, but when tested, positive siya for the use of dangerous drugs. Pumatay siya ng tao. Tapos, upon, uh, nahuli siya. Upon physical examination, it was found that he was positive for the use of dangerous drugs. What is the effect? Tinanong ito sa bar dati, no? It shall constitute as a qualifying aggravating circumstances in the commission of the crime. It shall constitute as a qualifying aggravating circumstance in the commission of the crime. Okay. Let's go to another law, which is BAUSI, Anti-Violence Against Women and Children. Uh, RA 9262. The violence against women and children, uh, titignan nyo lang, mm. uh, it refers to any act or series of acts. So one act alone can, uh, can constitute as a violation of this law. No? Committed against any woman? No, the woman must be is not not any woman dapat nagkaroon ng relasyon sa kanya kanyang asawa or former wife against a woman with whom the person has sexual or dating relationship sino ba nag in sila no or with whom nagkaroon siya ng anak o kaya yung uh, uh, the woman no has a child and the violence was directed against her child no? within or without the family abode, which is uh, result or is likely to result in physical, sexual, psychological harm or suffering or even economic abuse. Next. So what are the violence uh, referred to here? Violence against women and children. It's not limited to physical, but uh, also sexual, psychological, or even economic abuse. Are acts of violence against women and children a transitory or deemed as continuing crime? Alam nyo naman ang continuing crime, di ba? <laughs> Kung alam mo, ginawa sa nagdere-derecho, nagsimula sa Maynila, papuntang hanggang Pangasinan. 
Kung saan dinaanan yun, pwedeng uh, Bulacan, Pampanga, Pangasinan, Maynila. Pwede mo i-file yung kaso. Katulad ng kidnapping. Sabi ng batas, it is uh, can be deemed as a continuing crime. Meaning that some acts, material and essential thereto and requisite in their consummation occur in one municipality or territory while some occur in another. Okay. So you can be tried in any municipality or territory where the offense was in part committed. AAA versus PBB. Ang, 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 ang protection orders, like a temporary protection on order, it cannot be issued in favor of a man. PPO, TPO, Barangay Protection Order, hindi pa pwedeng i-issue in favor of a man against his, against his wife. Bakit? Kasi uh, violence against, against women. Hindi naman, ba, wala pa tayong violence against men and their children. So while waiting for that, wala tayong magagawa. We cannot avail, men cannot avail of these uh, protection orders. Concept of a battered women syndrome uh, refers to a scientifically a defined pattern of psychological and behavioral symptoms found in women living in a battering relationships as a cumulative as a result of a cumulative abuse. Memorize nyo to section 26, no? RA 9262. It is a proper defense, no? Victim survivors are found by the courts to be suffering from a battered women syndrome. Uh, do not incur any criminal or civil liability. Notwithstanding the absence of any of the elements of justifying circumstances of self-defense under the RPC. Maraming beses na tinanong ito sa bar. No, they do not. It's, this is just like a justifying circumstance. No criminal, no civil liability. Even if there is no unlawful aggression, no, or reasonable necessity of the means of rape, or lack of sufficient provocation. Even if the absence of that for as long as it was proven that is suffering from a battered women syndrome by an expert witness, then this can be raised. In Papal versus in Nelsa, it lays down. The cycle of violence, tandaan nyo. I'm sure you alam nyo na, no? TAT. No? Uh, we have the uh, tension building. Acute battering and tranquil loving. Tension building, in this is where the minor battering occurs. Verbal abuse, some of some physical abuses. So, nagtitiis pa rin si, uh, si wifey or uh, in the woman and then uh, T80. So you got uh, tension building. Tumaas na, naging acute battering. This is uh, acute na. This is characterized by brutality. No? And sometimes by death. Tapos magsosorry na siya, magkakaroon siya ng tranquil, loving face. Now, it is where the man would ask forgiveness from the woman. Now, these are three faces. One, two, three. Pag nilabas sa bar, dapat makita niyo yung tatlo na yan. And then, there should be two cycles of it. You cannot conclude that the woman is suffering from a battered women's syndrome if there are no three phases or three periods and at least two cycles thereof, those things must be shown. Or at least you, you should cite that in order to, uh, uh, to state or conclude that indeed there is, she's suffering from a battered women syndrome. I already explained this one. Abuses may be committed to another conspiracy, so the mother-in-law can be liable 
no even if this is a special penal law if there's conspiracy like the mother in law conspiring with the child unfortunate with with her child the husband in this case unfortunately no pepede does RA-9262 criminalize marital infidelity per se? No. No, uh, it's not marital infidelity per se, but the psychological violence causing mental or emotional suffering on the wife. Otherwise stated, the violence inflicted under the set circumstance that the law seeks to outlaw. So, hindi na may ibig sabihin ng marital infidelity fidelity uh, ay uh, ano, being penalized. Yung epekto na yun, yung merong psychological violence na suffered by the woman. Thus, the mental or emotional suffering of the victim is an essential and distinct element in the commission of the offense. So, yung kaso kasi nito ni, eh, uh, ay uh, Nag, uh, merong marital infidelity yung kanyang husband pumunta sa Singapore nagkaroon siya ng uh, mistress so she went abroad and confronted both of them including this uh, uh, ano, the mistress and then she went back to the Philippines so sabi ng, ano, ng lalaki hey, it was committed outside the, the Philippine territory Pero the argument is that, teka muna, yung psychological violence because of your infidelity. Daladala ko yan. So, uh, lumipat ako ng bahay, ba, from Manila, lumipat ako sa Sambay. And I cannot, she cannot bear that psychological uh, ano, impact, suffering because of that. And we said that this is a continuing transitory offense. So it can be filed in any place where there is a psychological suffering. Kung nagpalipat-lipat siya ng bahay, iba-ibang lugar, she can file in any of those jurisdictions, no? in any of those venues. Second, is coercive uh, control a form of psychological abuse? Ito ay hindi na pagmamahal. Ito ay yung pagmamanipulate na. So, a pattern of behavior meant to dominate a partner through several tactics. No? Uh, like yung physical violence uh, and the like. No? Threats, etc. No? Although not specifically named coercive uh, control as a form of psychological abuse, or harm has been recognized under our law. So, so ang, ano pa manifestation ng psychological violence? No, intimidation, harassment, stalking, damage to property, public ridicule, humiliation, humiliation, Repeated verbal abuse and mental infidelity. How do you consider uh, violence against women and children? Is it a public or private offense? Pag private offense kasi yan, so hindi mo basta-basta maipapail yan. Di ba? Siya lang dapat. May order of priority. Pero hindi to private offense. Eh. This is a public offense. So it can be filed by any person who has personal knowledge of the circumstances involving the commission of the crime. So you cannot uh, say as a matter of defense that ah, I was under drugs. That, that's why nagulpi ko siya or influence of alcohol. No, it shall not be a defense under this act. Oh, okay, the person can can avail of the following protection orders no? while the case is pending. Barangay Protection Order, BPO. PPO, Temporary Protection Order. And avail also Permanent Protection Order, PPO. Okay, let's go to uh, the bouncing checks law.
Ang bouncing checks daw ay uh, how do you differentiate uh, BP22 from S uh, Estafa through issuance of a postdated check. So one is punished under special law, the other one is punished under the vice penal code. Alam natin na uh, BP22 is a special penal law. So let's go back to the basic difference between SPL and RPC. So bouncing checks law is a special penal law. And therefore, good faith is not a proper defense, right? It is mala prohibita. So good faith is not a proper defense. When you talk about uh, staff at rituals of a post-dated check, no, it is punished under the revised penal code. And therefore, uh, the crime is deemed to be mala in se. And since in mala in se, good faith is a defense sa staff at rituals of a post-dated check. Sa BP-22, hindi. Kasi special na yun. Now, let's go to specifics. No, ano bang elements ng staff? Ha? May damage, no? De deceit or abuse of confidence in both instances may damage. Sa BP-22, damage is not an element of the crime. What is punished is the issue once of a worthless check. No? Ano pa? Uh, he's given five bug. It doesn't follow. Pag tumalbog yung check, eh, ay... Uh, He's liable for estafa or even BP-22. Ang pondo mo, halimbawa, 100,000. Sa banko, nag-issue ka ng check ng 150,000. So, kulang insufficient ang pondo mo sa banko. Diba? So, ganun yun. Prinisintay yung check, tumalbog-tuloy. Dishonored by the bank. Uh, liable again, uh, agad for BP-22 and estafa? No. Because under BP-22, dapat bigyan ka ng five banking days. Ano? Bigyan ka ng notice of dishonor within bank. Uh, uh, you must be given a notice of dishonor and, and giving you an opportunity to pay or make arrangement in full within five banking days reckoned from receipt of the notice of dishonor. Pag hindi natanggap yung notice of dishonor na yun, this was ang kaso. Kasi um, the law allows the person the opportunity to pay it no and if that if that opportunity if that opportunity uh, is not given or the the person the accused has been deprived of the opportunity to pay then then uh, the case will be dismissed only after the lapse of the five, five banking days no reckon from the receipt of the notice of this owner at hindi siya nagbayad magbigib rights yon ng presumption of insufficiency the presumption of knowledge of insufficiency of funds presumption of knowledge of insufficiency of funds so nagcreate ng presumption kailangan iribat na ng kalaban yon pagka naman uh, estafa yung notice of this owner instead of five banking days three days lang an opportunity to pay Pag nag-lapse yun, magkikreate yun ng presumption. No, hindi ang kung ang BP22 ang presumption ay knowledge of insufficiency of funds. Sa estafa ang presumption ay uh, presumption of deceit. Prima facie evidence of deceit. And we will discuss that uh, later on. We will continue. Oops, mali ata. O, huwag muna nga matulog ha. Kawawa naman si Dean Pesting, wala kasama. Kailangan ito sa bar, baka itanong ito sa bar ha. Yes sir. Okay, BP22 does not cover manager's check and cashier's check. But it uh, covers accommodation or guarantee check. Cross check, no? negotiable instrument yan, kasama sa BP-22. Okay? Anong nature ng BP-22? Is it a crime against property? Not, not, not only that, but it is against public order. 
to stem the harm caused by these bouncing checks to the community. Baka itanong sa bar. It is a crime against public order. Ang estafa is a crime against property. Yung principle of conspiracy kanina, sinabi natin applicable sa ano, violence against women and children. Applicable din siya sa BP-22. No? Applicable din siya sa BP-22. So the grave man, what is punished is the act of making or issuing a worthless check. No? Or a check that is dishonored upon its presentment for payment. So it is not the non-payment of the obligation which the law punishes. It's but what is punished is the mere act of issuing a worthless check. You whether you, if you issued it, whether as a deposit, as a guarantee, or even as a evidence of pre-existing debt, it is deemed as malum prohibitum. So elements of the first paragraph, nag-draw siya, nag-make siya, nag-issue siya. No? Uh, at the time that he issued the check, he does not have sufficient funds no? with the drawing bank. No? So again, ito sinabi ko kanina na bibigyan ng presumption of knowledge of insufficiency of funds. Pag nakatanggap siya ng five ba within five banking days of notice of dishonor at hindi niya binara, binayaran. Ano bang form ng notice of dishonor? Uh, kaya uh, pwedeng be written, no? Uh, yun. Will there be other circumstances to prove that the accused received? Kasi material ang notice of dishonor. Eh. Pagka ikaw ay complainant ka, make sure that uh, the, the other person had received the notice of dishonor. Otherwise, pwede dismiss ang kaso mo. No? Sa, dito sa yes, pepede. E kung if the other party refuses to accept the same, pepede. Sabi ng Supreme Court, you know, uh, in Martin versus Itoralde, citing the people versus campus, sinabi niya, may mga circumstances daw that the accused received the notice of this honor as when the latter made arrangements for the payment of her obligations subsequently after the dishonor. And after this circumstance, accused confirmed that she actually received the required notice of dishonor. Hence, the accused would not have entered into arrangements if she had not received a notice of dishonor from her creditor and had knowledge, no knowledge of insufficiency of funds. Ganito. Bawa, hindi mapapirbahan ng complainant. No? Uh, pero hindi siya nagtumanggap. Ang tumanggap, ibang tao. Pwedeng uh, yung anak niya o kasambahay. At uh, ang ginawa ni, ni, ng akusado, ibinigay niya sa lawyer niya. At ang lawyer niya sinasabing, o oh, sige, arrange na lang natin. Ito na lang ang payment na bibigay ko sa'yo. O oh, that's implied na natanggap niya yung notice of dishonor. Because uh, the latter, through his, through his lawyer, made arrangement for the payment of obligation. So pag gumawa ng arrangement for the payment of, for, of obligations no, subsequently after the dishonor on the check and it presumes that uh, nata, nakata, natanggap niya, nabasa niya yung notice of dishonor. Okay? Ang dating mga uh, jurisprudence, jurisprudence dyan is that a mere presentation of registry return Receipts that cover registered mail was not sufficient to establish written notices of dishonor. But there are circumstances that the accused received the notice of dishonor as when the latter made arrangements for the payment of her obligations. In this case, the evidence convincingly proved that the, actual, the accused actually received a corresponding notice of dishonor uh, despite the evasive answer of the accused to the query or on whether he received the demand letter. Kasi anong nakalagay dito? Uh, yung lawyer niya, nag-send sa lawyer ng complainant. 
at uh, nagsabi, eh, like, gawa tayo ng arrangement, paano natin, ma- paano mababayaran ng kliyente kayo. So, this only shows that uh, the letter, the notice of dishonor was received. Okay. In campus versus people, uh, sinabi niya, she denied receiving a notice of dishonor. Uh, sabi niya, dapat acquitted ako. Uh, uh, sabi niya, I acted in good faith nga eh. Because sabi ko nga, gumawa ako ng uh, arrangement with the company for the payment of my obligation after the subject checks were dishonored. Sabi ng Supreme Court, yung petition mo lacks merit. Kasi, uh, uh, gaya na nga sinabi natin is because you made arrangements already no after receipt of the notice of the dishonor but bakit ka mag gagawa ng arrangements if you have not received the notice of dishonor okay yan ah uh, yung yung admission niya itself was used against her when she stated that she has in her favor evidence to show that she was in good faith and indeed made arrangements for the payment of her obligations. This was just a confirmation that she actually received the required notice of dishonor, sabi ng court. And she, she would not have entered into any arrangements uh, no, if she had not received a notice of dishonor from her creditor. Tama nga naman. Diba? Elements of the second paragraph. At well, the time that he issued the check, funded, alam bawa, 200,000, nag-issue siya ng check, 150,000, okay lang. Pero subsequently, 100, yung 200 na yun, naging 120 na lang. No? And when presented, when the check was presented, it was no longer 200 but 120,000 na lang and it's not sufficient to cover the 150,000 which is indicated in the amount of the check issued to the complainant where is the venue in filing a criminal case uh, maybe filed ito kahit saan uh, either at the place where the check was issued or in, in the place where it is drawn or delivered or deposited. Okay, sinabi ko na yung difference between the two. Okay. The seat and damage are not essential elements of the crime. Prima facie evidence of the seat in estafa, uh, presumption of knowledge of insufficiency of funds in BP 22. Fourth is that in Estafa, the check is issued in payment of a simultaneous obligation. In BP22, the check is issued in payment of a pre-existing obligation. Ibig sabihin, simultaneous with the issuance of the uh, check is the employment of deceit. Parating may deceit yan eh. Nah. So halimbawa, sinabi niya, Uy, hey, ano? Uh, Sabi niya, eh, bibigay ko check sa'yo. Eh, issue ko yung check sa'yo. Akin na yung mga goods mo. Uh, I assure you, this, this, this check is funded. Eh, best friend sila. No? Naging friend sila sa recap. No? So, nagtiwala siya. No? Because of those uh, insidious words. No? At uh, sabay silang kumain during sa recap. Oh, sige na nga. Okay. Binigay niya yung goods worth that for that guarantee. No. That's an employment of deceit which caused damage. That's estafa. Simultaneous obligation. Simultaneous with the issuance of the post-dated check is the employment of deceit. <coughs> so BP22, wala nang employed. Wala nang, wala nang employment of deceit. Basta dati Magka-vibes na tayo dati. Mag-order ako sa'yo, binabayaran kita sa check eh. Except that at this time, kinapos ako. No? Uh, biglang na-dishonor ng banko. So that's 
payment of a pre-existing obligation. Let's continue. Uh, in Estafa, endorser who is with the knowledge that the check is worthless and not acted with deceit is liable. Alam yung negotiable instrument, di ba? May mga endorser yan. Yung endorser sa Estafa, liable. Endorser sa BP22, not liable. Kasi ang importante lang kung sino nag-issue ng check at pumirma. Estafa is mahala in say. Good faith is a proper defense. BP22 is balong prohibito. I mentioned that a while ago. Uh, well, I already explained that concept as well. So can a person be both liable for BP22 and another for uh, RPC? Yes, because the elements are not the same. Deceit and damage for BP22, uh, which is not an element of... I'm mean, sorry. Deceit and damage for... Uh, Estafa through issuance of a post dated check. In BP22, it's just the issuance of a worthless check. Deceit and damage are not elements of BP22. Hence, a person may be both liable for special law BP22 and RPC as well. Estafa. The filing of a criminal case under BP22 shall not prejudice any liability. Uh, arising from a felony committed under the revised penal code. What are your possible defenses? Uh, uh, hindi ko pirma yan. No? Unauthorized signature. Hindi ako tamanggap niyan. Maliban na lang kung uh, naggawa ka ng arrangement. No? O kaya, nakatanggap ka naman ng notice of dishonor. Pero binayaran mo within the period, within the five banking days. Full payment is uh, a proper defense. No? Prescription is a proper defense. Forgery of the signature. It's not my signature appearing therein. Sa kaso na ni, uh, ni Ariel din, uh, lumagpas siya ng five banking days. No? Pero binayaran niya rin naman prior to the filing of the criminal case. Ang sabi dito, although payment of the value of the bank check if made beyond the five-day uh, period uh, provided for in BP22 would normally exting not extinguish criminal liability Okay, kasi binayaran ng BN5 Bank in days, pero sinasabi sa Supreme Court may exception. The affirmation cases show that the court acknowledges the existence of what they call as extraordinary cases. Ito ay extraordinary case in this case, no, kahit lumagpas siya ng 5 banking days. No, sabi ng Supreme Court, even if all the elements of the crime or offense are present, the con conviction of the case would prove to be abhorrent to society's sense of justice abhorrent to society's sense of justice no the fact that the issuer of the check binayaran ka na in full no after having received the subpoena from the office of the prosecutor dapat ano na yan hindi na na file yan sa information fully paid ka na eh ano, ano pang gusto mo no in effect the payment of the checks before the filing of the information has already attained the purpose of the law. Pwede niyong ilagay yan. Kung nagbayad siya beyond the five banking day period upon the receipt of the notice of dishonor, but paid in full before the filing of the information, then uh, you can say that in, in this case, in people versus Ariel Lim, no, the, the payment of the checks before the filing of the information has already attained the purpose of the law. Lack of valuable consideration is not a proper defense in BP22. Novation is not a proper defense in BP22. Novation is a uh, proper defense in Estafa if uh, novation took place prior to the filing of a uh, case in uh, prior to the filing of the criminal case. 
stop payment for a proper defense in BP22. Pag sinabang issue ako ng check, eh, uh, alimbawa, ay, uh, kumuha ako ng goods sa'yo, nag-issue ako ng check, eh, pero yung goods mo defective. Teka muna, lugi ako. Sabi ko sa banko mo, stop payment muna. Huwag bayaran yan. Pwede? A proper defense? Depende. No? Uh, kung at the time nag-stop payment ka, uh, sufficient naman ang funds mo to cover the check, walang problema. Kung problema is, I have 100,000 peso no, uh, uh, in my account and I only issued 20,000 pesos to X, to A. And then what, what she delivered to me are defective goods. I can make stop payment. And that's only 20,000 pesos. My money in the bank is 100,000 pesos. But if it's the other way around, no, uh, if the amount of my uh, money in the bank is only 20,000 pesos and I issued a check worth 100,000 pesos, then uh, even if I make the stop payment, that's not a proper defense. I will be liable. Corporation, when the check is drawn, by a corporation, company, or entity, the person or persons who actually sign the check in behalf of such a work shall be liable. The officer who is accused of signing the check must receive the notice of dishonor. Constructed notice to the corporation who has a separate personality from its officer is not enough. So, kung ang officer nag sign ng uh, check, eh, siya ang liable. Pero dapat yung notice of this owner, he must also personally receive, not, not through his or her secretary. So yung constructive notice to the corporation is not enough. No? Administrative Circular 12-2000, the court has not decriminalized BP-22, nor removed imprisonment as an alternative penalty, but the court states that Needless to say, the, ter the determination of whether the circumstances warrant the position of a fine alone rests solely upon the judge. Pwedeng ang judge uh, mag-meet ng penalty uh, without uh, imprisonment. A fine alone, pwede, but it rests solely upon the judge. The court said that, the, the, the court said that in this case, Donaria versus People, should the judge decide that imprisonment is the more appropriate penalty, this administrative 12-2000 ought not to be deemed as a hindrance. Now, this administrative 13-2001, it states that uh, it provides that uh, it, they, it only lay down a rule of reference insofar as the application of the penalties provided for in BP-22. Okay. Ang sabi ng batas lang dito, uh, it just established, again, the rule of preference. Where the circumstances of both the offense and the offender, it clearly indicates good faith or a clear mistake of fact without taint of any negligence. Sabi ng court is that in explaining this, the imposition of a fine alone, pwede na should be considered as the more appropriate penalty. Okay, so this admin circular 12-2000, it does not follow that the court removed imprisonment as an alternative penalty. It depends upon the judge to determine whether the imposition of a final loan will best serve the interest of justice. At hindi makikilam ang uh, court. No? Anyway, pag he's unable to pay the fines, said the court, there is no legal obstacle to the application of the revised penal code provisions on subsidiary imprisonment. Kung di siya nagbayad ng fine, di pwede siyang kasuha ng mag, ma, makulong ng one day equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate. In, in this case, when a corporate officer issues a worthless check in the corporate name, he may be held personally liable. No? 
the uh, officer cannot shield himself from a liability on the ground that it was a corporate act and not his personal act. Okay, so before we go into the anti-fencing law, let's have a 10-minute break. Uh, Malapit-lapit na rin tayo. Lagpas kalahati na tayo. So, uh, let's have a 10-minute break. Uh, 3.12. Yeah, 3.12 tayo. wait for the others uh, one minute Sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Pwede magtanong. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, let's go to, uh, we can now record. Yes, Pudin. Uh, let's go into the anti-fencing. So, what's so significant ang uh, anti-fencing law? When you compare this with the, un with the accessories under paragraph uh, one, uh, I think uh, we discussed ko na rin to during the last time. Just a brief uh, recap of what is a, a crime of fencing. Uh, there is no anti, there is no fencing if no crime of robbery and or theft were committed. So, dapat there is a crime of robbery or theft. So, there's no fencing if there's no robbery or theft. No? 
and accuse is not a principal or an accomplice in the crime who buys or sells uh, or con keeps or acquires, conceals or disposes of anything of item no, or anything of value which have been derived from the proceeds of crime of robbery or theft. It's possession of a article which is the subject of robbery or theft. Excuse me, Dean. This is the most important one. C. Mahina po yung sounds. Accused knows or should have known that said item has been derived from the proceeds of the crime of robbery or theft. And there is also intent to gain for himself or for another. Uh, accused knows or should have known that it came from the proceeds of robbery or theft. No. Kung bumili ka ng brand new na uh, libro ko sa special proceedings ng 50, pe 50 pesos or 50 pesos. No? Nakabili ka ng 50 pesos na uh, brand new special proceedings. You know for, and it's ano ah, uh, latest edition. You know for a fact that it costs 1,500 pesos. And you were able to buy it only at 50 pesos brand new. So this, this letter C would, would set in. The accused knows as a law graduate, as a reviewee, or should have known that it came from the proceeds of uh, robbery or theft. Hello, mas rinig na ba? Hindi na, okay na po. Kasi nakalimutan ko meron pala akong ano, ganito. Okay, sige. Oh. Uh, importante dyan is that the crime or theft has been committed. Pag walang robbery or theft committed, walang atay fencing law. Tapos yung akusado knows that it came from the proceeds of, uh, or knows or should have known that those items came from the proceeds of robbery or theft. Gaya ng sinabi ko, if you're able to buy my book at 50 pesos, brand new, at 1,500 sa market ito, sa uh, Rex Bookstore, uh, this paragraph 3 would set in. No, You should have known that it came from the proceeds of robbery or theft because you only bought it for 50 pesos. And you know for a fact that as a low graduate that it cost... Uh, more than 50 pesos. Substantially more than that. Okay. Uh, in, in, in comparison with an accessory, uh, anti-fencing is malum prohibitum. So balik na naman tayo nun. Malum prohibitum, good faith is not a proper defense, accessory to rubber theft, RPC, Therefore, uh, there is a uh, uh, mala in se, intent is an element of the crime, good faith is a proper defense. No? Yun. There is a presumption of uh, fencing. Pag eh, nasa, alimbawa, nakita ko yung libro mo, libro ko sa'yo na 50 pesos mo nakita lang. May possession uh, of uh, anything good or item which has been the subject of robbery, thievery, Shall be uh, prima facie evidence of fencing. Uh, yon. So it is now incumbent upon that person to rebut that uh, prima facie presumption. So pag ikay, uh, you're dealing with the buy and sell uh, activities, so uh, to be safe, no, this is what you need to do. Secure the ne necessary clearance or permit from the station commander of the uh, PNP. INP pa dati nun. Okay. Uh, in, in, in town or city where such store establishment or entity is located. That would be a proper defense if one is accused of uh, being involved in uh, uh, fencing activities. Illegal possession of firearms. <clears throat> In illegal possession of firearms and ammunition, prosecution is the burden of proving that these twin elements, existence of the subject firearm, that the accused who possess and own the same does not have the corresponding license for it. No. Okay, nasa exists, meron kang uh, subject firearm, 
and you have no authority no uh, or license uh, to possess or own the same is ownership an essential element of illegal possession no uh, again this is only animus possidendi you know uh, it includes only uh, 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 physical possession as well as constructive possession when you have a control uh, over the uh, the place where it is the kind of possession punished under this uh, law is where the accused possess of firearms either physically or constructively with animus possidenti or what what we know as intent to possess the same pero yung it it broadens already the concept of a firearm without a license so it it includes among others if you have a firearms but with expired uh, license it shall be deemed as an unlicensed firearm or an authorized use of licensed firearm in the commission of the crime no kinuha min paril lang iyong kapatid na licensed again as i've said uh, firearms no longer uh, simply means a firearm without license it includes a firearm with li expired license or an authorized use of licensed firearm in the commission of the crime and it is settled that the lack or absence of a license is an essential ingredient of the crime of illegal possession of firearm. What is the corpus delicti? The prosecution has the burden of proving that the firearms exist and that the accused uh, does not have the corresponding license or permit to possess or carry it outside. Uh, um, is uh, a person is charged of uh, illegal possession of firearms, but the firearms was not presented in court. Is it fatal? No, it's not the corpus delicti, unlike in drugs. Na. Sa drugs, kailangan ipresenta mo. Ito, pero yung mark money, di ba, hindi, hindi naman kinakailangan. Ganito rin dito. Yung firearms, hindi kinakailangan ipresenta sa court because the existence of the firearm can be established by the testimony even without the presentation of the said firearm. Just a certifications from the fire and exclusive unit, no, from FEU. Anong concept ng list firearms? It refers to an unregistered firearm, or if it is an obliterated or altered firearm, or firearm which has been lost or stolen, legally manufactured firearms, registered firearms in the possession of an individual other than the licensee and those with revoked licenses in accordance with the rules and regulations. It will be deemed as a loose firearm. Now, what is the significance if it is a loose firearm? Because under Section 29 of uh, RA 10591, the use of uh, loose firearm in the commission of a crime. The use of loose firearm, no, sabi ng batas, when inherent in the commission of a crime punishable under the RPC or other special laws shall be considered as an aggravating circumstance. The use of a loose firearm when inherent in the commission of a crime punished under the RPC or special laws shall be considered as an aggravating circumstance. Okay. Sa penalty na yan, di yan. Let's go to the Untitled Child Abuse Law. No? 7610. Child Abuse uh, under Section 3B. It could uh, refer to, it is, uh, it refers to maltreatment of a child. Kailangan ba habitual? Hindi. Kasi sinabi dito, whether habitual or not. Kahit isang insidente, um, uh, a, 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 an accused may commit child abuse. And child abuse could be under the end of the following. Uh, psychological and physical abuse, neglect, cruelty, sexual abuse, and emotional maltreatment. Or secondly, or any act by deeds or words, no? uh, 
verbal abuse which debases, degrades, or demeans the intrinsic worth and dignity of a child as a human being. Bigat. Or unreasonable deprivation of his basic needs for survival, food, shelter, or failure to give a medical uh, treatment to an injured child, which results in, in serious impairment of his growth and development or permanent incapacity. As I've said, it is inconsequential that the sexual abuse occurred only uh, once. Child abuse includes physical abuse of the child, whether the same is habitual or not. Paragraphs under 5A, which is punished under this law. Okay, ano ano yon? Uh, this refers most, uh, mostly to prostitution. No? The accused engages and promotes, uh, facilitates, or induces child prostitution. Uh, how it is done? No, uh, li not limited to this. No. Acting as procurer of a child prostitute, uh, inducing a person to be a client of a child prostitute, prostitute no? taking advantage of, of influence or relatives again to procure child as a prostitute, threatening or using toward a child to engage him as a prostitute, or giving monetary considerations you know, or other benefit to a child with intent to engage such child in child prostitution. So this law, which is uh, 5A, refers, uh, isa lang tinutumbok nito, uh, which is child prostitution. The child is spotted, that they've exploited in prostitution. Of course, the child is below 18 years of age. Now, those are belong to Section 5A. Now, this is Section 5B. Uh, number one is that uh, sexual abuse under sec Section 5B. Number one, the accused commits an act of sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct. Number two, said act is performed with a child exploited in prostitution. And of course, it is the age of the child is below 18 years of age. Pag sinabing subject to sexual abuse, when is a child deemed uh, subjected to other sexual abuse? Uh, you know? Kasi uh, yung 5A malinaw, ito uh, pro child prostitution, di ba? Pero to are subjected to other uh, sexual abuse. A child is deemed subjected to other sexual abuse when a child indulges in lascivious conduct under coercion. So if there's a coercion or influence of any adult, no? uh, there must be some form of compulsion equivalent to intimidation which subdues the free exercise of the offended party's free will. So each incident of sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct with a child under circumstances mentioned in Article 3, 70, 7610 is a separate and distinct offense. Okay, kung merong consensual sexual intercourse, uh, kailangan uh, consensual, uh, dapat uh, merong persuasion, inducement, enticement, or coercion of the child must be present. Can a person be charged of committing an act punished under Section 5B and rape at the same time? Uh, di ba binago na natin yun? 15 years old na ang uh, ang ang uh, ang uh, uh, yung statutory rape. No? So pati ito affected na rin. So take into consideration yung age na ngayon which is 15 years. No? Are below. Can rape be complex with the violation section 5B? No, uh, it's, it's, it cannot be complex because one is a special law. Uh, one is uh, an RPC. Basic in the distinction between uh, complex crime and uh, uh, basic principle in complex crime is that 
it is only applicable to crime Spanish under the revised penal code. So if the other one is a special law, uh, there can never be a complex crime. Or if the other one is only a light felony, then there can be no complex crime. No. Uh, subjected to other uh, sexual abuse is not an element in the crime of acts of lasciviousness. Again, take note of the uh, changes in so far as the age of the child is concerned. Applicable bang rule of upsetting? Yes, uh, because it uses the nomenclature of penalties under the revised penal code. Anti torture act. Persons criminally liable under Section 13B. Uh, ito ay special penal laws, but it uses the uh, the persons criminally liable, such as the principals, accomplices, and accessories. Can torture as a, a crime absorb or be absorbed by any other crime? No torture should be treated as a separate and independent crime under the law. Penalty if any persons against persons or again uh, liberty security if attended by torture and similar acts, the penalty to be acts, uh, imposed shall be in its maximum period. This is again a special aggravating which cannot be upset by any ordinary mitigating circumstance. The person is found to have committed the crime of torture be benefited from any special uh, subsequent special uh, amnesty law uh, express provision they're excluded from the coverage of special laws. A juvenile and justice welfare act, diversion program, memorizing nyo lang, pero ang tagal ng tinanong ito, uh, uh, just for the information of the uh, viewers, it refers to the program that a child is in conflict with. Uh, the law is required to undergo after she is found responsible for an offense without resorting to a formal proceedings. Intervention, tinanong din minsan, refers to a series of activities which are designed to address issues that cause the child to commit an offense. Um, kaya tinanong to kasi bago lang yung batas at that time. Okay. Uh, a child 15 years of under at the time of the commission of death should be exempt. No? Uh, but it can be subjected to an intervention program. A child uh, above 15, below 18, exempted also likewise, unless he acted with discernment, and he shall be subjected to an intervention program. What is discernment? Yes, yung sabi natin kanina, uh, mental capacity of a, fine, of a minor to fully appreciate the consequences of his unlawful act. No? The sermon is again shown in the case of uh, Robert Remento. In this case, his act of waiting for the uh, victim's parents to leave the house before defiling the latter and threatening to kick her if she should shout, prove that petitioner can differentiate what is right and what is wrong. Who is entitled to the presumption of a uh, minority? The child in conflict with the law shall enjoy the presumption of minority. He shall enjoy all the rights of a child in conflict with the law until he is proven to be 18 years of age. Kung may do the man as the age of the child, it should be resolved in his favor. Is there an automatic suspension of sentence applicable? Uh, once a child who is under 18 years of age at the time he committed the act, is found guilty of offense, uh, the, the court shall asserting uh, his civil liability, okay? Uh, but in so far as criminal liability, the court shall place the child in conflict with the law under suspended uh, sentence, no? Without need of application. Suspension of the sentence uh, shall still be applied even if the child is already 18 years of age or more at the time of this uh, pronouncement of his or her guilt. Important lang is that when he committed the crime, he is still a minor. When may the child in conflict with the law be returned to the court? Uh, if the court finds that the objective of the disposition measures imposed upon a child 
have not been comply, be fulfilled or if the child in conflict with the law has willfully failed to comply with the conditions of or, or disposition or rehabilitation program, the child in conflict with the law shall be brought before the court for execution of judgment. Ibig sabihin, kung siya ay parang, parang kung siya ay incorrigible na, then sentensyan siya. Pero, uh, pag above 15, below 18, acting with discernment, then, um, pwede na siyang mag-avail ng uh, privilege mitigating. E tanong, e paano kung to, e beyond 20 years of age na siya can still avail of the uh, suspension of his sentence? Tinanong sa bar ito. Uh, no. Uh, uh, pag 18, 19, 20, okay, pwede pa yun eh. Uh, 21, pwede yung super suspension. Pero express provision of the law, pag over or beyond the age of 21, uh, hindi na. Okay. Hindi na. Hindi na kailangan. Hindi na siya pwede mag ng suspension of sentence. Pero pwede siya ng uh, under section 51. Ano yun? Confinement of conviction in agricultural camps. Pwede siya dun sa agricultural camps and other training facilities. No? May the child in conflict of the law be in, in, uh, instead be placed on probation as an alternative to imprisonment? Yes. Uh, by express provision of the law, uh, uh, the place the child on probation in view of service of her sentence. Uh, again, uh, this is, since what is involved with a child, now we apply the best interest of the child. Can a minor be required to serve his sentence in agricultural camp and training facilities? Oo, di ba? Uh, pepede. Katulad na sinabi ko kanina, until <clears throat> even beyond 21 years of age. Yun. If, uh, if the accused was under 18 of age at the time of the commission of the offense, even if already over 21 uh, years at the time of conviction, may avail of the benefit of Section 51. That is confinement in an agricultural camp, but not suspension of sentence. Yun. Okay, matapos tayo. What is the concept of status offenses? Section 57, any conduct not considered as an offense or not penalized if committed by an adult shall not be considered an offense and shall not be punished if committed by a child. The reckoning point in considering minority is the time of the commission of the crime. Okay, so, okay, I end my lecture. Don't forget Psalms 9, uh, verse 10 to 11. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a tower of strength in times of your trouble, and those who know your name Put their trust in you. Those who have faith in you, ibig sabihin, put their trust in you. For this is the nature of God. You have not abandoned those who seek you, Lord. For those that seek the Lord, no, uh, the Lord will not abandon you. Okay, make him a strong tower of your life. No, he should be the foundation of your life, no matter what the challenges that you are facing. Lahat naman ng tao may mga challenges. Uh, including your dean, kahit presidente ng Pilipinas, kahit presidente ng Amerika, there are challenges. No? But you know, uh, we have put your faith in God, the Lord will not abandon those who seek Him with their whole heart and with their whole soul. Uh, alam mo, sabi ko, uh, yung kasama nyo ng mga recap last year, pumasa na. Kaya rin, papasa rin. No? Kung nakatawid sila, kaya rin, makakatawid. So, huwag kayong magduda. No? Uh, kaya yan. Basta, you have to do your part. Ngayon, uh, amin eh, September, consider this September, October, November, lapit na. No? September, October, two months na lang. September, October, then the bar examinations. Okay? So, sa mga loved ones nyo, sabihin nyo, supportahan kayo. No? Kung may mga loved ones kayo, sabi ni Dean, supportahan nyo daw ako. Diba? Ipagluto nyo daw ako. No? Ganon yun. Mahalin nyo daw ako. 
Pag-aawain, saka na awain paglabas na ng bar. No, lawyer na kayo. Better ba tama kaya awain kabugado na kayo, di ba? Ganun lang, no? Ah, uh, kung nakikinig ang mga asawa niyo, mga anak niyo, minamahal sa buhay, alagaan niyo yung mga barista natin. Gaya ng pag-alaga ko sa kanila. Uh, Miss Assisto, nandiyan ba yung Hana? Nandiyan ba yung asawa mo? Ah, Mister. Mahalin mo si ano ah, si Miss Assisto. At least hanggang November man lang, lahat kayo na may mga mahal sa buhay. No, suportahan niyo kung kailangan ng pera, bigyan niyo ng pera. Kung kailangan ng peace of mind, bigyan ng peace of mind. Huwag aawayin magbibigyan ng pressure lalong-lalo na uh, there are only three months to go for the bar examinations. No, tulungan natin sila para makatawid na. We're doing our part dito sa sa recap, we're doing our part dito sa PBRC. Uh, yung mga tao na malapit sa buhay ng ating mga barista should also do their part. And of course, you, kayo mismo mga barista, you have to do your part. No? Uh, stay Again, stay away from people who try to belittle your ambitions. No? Uh, wag masyado sa social media. No? Kung, kung na kailangan lang, wag, uh, wag mo nang tuming sa social media. Just uh, focus no, on that goal of becoming a lawyer. Uh, marami akong mga students, or now lawyers, because they heeded my advice. That is, don't refrain from using social media, uh, at least during the bar examinations. And they did. Mga lawyers na sila. And I'm happy for them. No? May mga law offices na sila, nagpa-practice na sila, may ID na sila ng IBP. I'm ha very happy for them. Now, um, I'm also be happy for you. Uh, if I have faith, if I uh, and believe that you can uh, be able to pass the bar, so you yourself should uh, uh, do that. Believe in yourself. Of course, believe in God. No, uh, pero it's not entirely believing on God, but uh, uh, God has to see your faith manifested through your hard works. No, ganun lang, ganun lang. Uh, you'll be able to make it. You'll be able to make it. Basta don't condemn yourself. When you're inside the bar examination room, relax ka lang, cool. Make sure na wala kang, walang blank ang sagot mo. No? And you already envision yourself inside the, uh, the, the bar room na cool ka lang, no? na at peace ka lang. Dapat i-visualize mo na yung sarili mo at hindi ka nagpapanik. Ngayon, during those uh, dates that you're taking the bar, you have to visualize yourself as being cool, not panicking, no, uh, and trusting in the Lord, no. And you have to pray to God. Na guna na mangyare, no. Uh, let others panic. Let others. Uh, kung sila, kung first time sila nang panic, kung kasi first time sila kawa ng bar, let them do so. But in so far as your concern, uh, veterano na kayo. dapat hindi na kayo nagpapanik pa. Diba? Dapat you are already imposing yourself. This time, sasabi mo sarili mo sa, sa, while, while taking the bar, this time around, I will pass. Hindi ko na makikita yung mga bar exams na yan, yung mga bar questions na yan. I will overcome you. Diba? Ganun lang yun. Eh. Dalawa lang yun kasi yan. Eh. Parang boxing. Eh. Either uh, uh, matalo ka niya o oh, matalo mo siya. Kailangan matalo mo siya. You have to impose yourself. In the manner the way you know in the manner by which you answer dapat ini-impose mo sarili mo I should already like a lawyer like right like a lawyer argue like a lawyer answer like a lawyer and you will become one because uh, your dream matters to God as well your dream matters to me and uh, your dream matters to God as well so yon stay close to him and he will stay you will stay closer to uh, your dream. God bless everyone and have a good day. And uh, pwede na kayong uh, magpahinga. Okay? Thank you, Dean. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dean. Bye. Thank you, Dean. Bye.